I will not obey. troops. Hey guys, welcome to the stream. Uh, let's get started on this battle over here. Shouldn't be anything to be too concerned about. Um, I think I might... Hang on, let me look here. Who wishes the red kiss? Alright, let's do this. At least thanks for doing my disaster battle. Ah, uh, no worries, dude. The video did well, so it was my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you for sending it in. And yeah, that was a disaster that only took me one try. I was thinking about trying it again after doing it. I was like, mm, can I do a better result? But then I thought, ah, it's, it's interesting if uh, some units get nuked. <laughs> so I was like, I left it. But yeah, thanks for sending it in. Uh, you once said that you think the next total, uh, next franchise for Total War would be 40k. Do you still stand by that? I mean, it's just a guess. And wh why anyone trusts my power of predictions at this point is beyond me. I, I don't understand why anybody asks me about the future. I can't predict what day it's going to be tomorrow, let alone what Creative Assembly is going to do, all of my predictions for Total War Warhammer 3 were false. <laughs> not not lies, but they were all wrong. Everything I predicted about Warhammer 3 was wrong, pretty much. I don't know why anyone asks me about this stuff. I am so bad at predicting things, this is why I don't gamble, because, I, and I've said this before, I once went into a casino with a friend and said, my powers of prediction are so bad... Whatever I guess, bet against me. And so, they did that. And they won six times in a row, betting against what my predictions were. There's something wrong. Like, I... I, I wouldn't say it's a curse, because I work around it. But... Lady Luck is not on my side. I have to make my own luck. Or have to rely on things that that without luck. So yeah, power prediction is terrible, basically. Long story short, there. All right, you just sit there and tank, because I don't want to withdraw this guy from the battlefield. And we have to wait for the reinforcements to show up. All right, we got two flyers. Isabella could have been flying, but I chose other skills. So she'll have to um go by land. What's your opinion on Vargulfs? Uh, yeah, they're pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I wouldn't spam them. Good siege attacker. Yeah, if I add a Vargulf, I might uh, replace them. Well, oh, Mordfan Cavalry Cavalry's fine, I guess. That's a lie. You don't have friends? This is a long time ago before I, I had no friends. <laughs> I used to have friends. No, I have friends. No, sorry. I have friends. Why are you so mean to me? I have I have 213 friends here right now. And more are on the way. Yeah, we're not going to be able to cap the town square here. I'm 
How much magic do we have? Uh, seems a little bit low. Is Blackstone Post dead? No, no, they're still active. As far as I can tell, they're still all around. It's still very early in the campaign. We don't even turn 30. It usually takes the AI a little bit longer to take them out than that. And um, that that settlement, uh, what's it called? Um, Barrow Legion is quite revivable. So she's done a lot of damage, but not so many kills. So you get them to break through there. I'm going to put these up on the wall here. Just leave that guy there. It's fine. No, uh, that's actually not that great. Cancel that cast. Do another one. Okay, since they've put troops over here, maybe I won't climb up on the walls yet, since the vampires are still doing a good job. Just try to get out of range of these damn towers. Empire's on the way up. Um, it's not faring well for them. Let's just put it that way. Um, there's still a bit more to do for the, against the Empire. I've taken Altdorf, but Reichland is... They're still alive. They've got one settlement left, but we're going to try to keep them alive. Which means they might confederate someone. Or someone might just come in and wipe him out, because I, I really like farming Volkmar the Grim's trait. It's one of the best ones for vampire accounts, if you're going to scaly spam. Oh man. Protect you. Gonna shut up a little bit here, but there's no area of effect damage stuff, so we're fine. Let me get these guys over here. No, you have to stay back there. Okay. Yeah, we don't have tons of magic here. So we're probably going to need to climb the walls, unfortunately. Is there a max number of traits what your lord can have? Yes. Yeah, there is a max number. I don't know exactly what it is. But there is definitely a point to which they stop gaining traits. What's up with the Wyman 3 update, guys? I think it's a hot fix to fix the uh, click drag bug. Which isn't actually a bug, it's a feature. <laughs> it was intentional, apparently. Okay, I may have done myself dirty over here. This one here is having a hard time. I need to get her out. Oh, it's only quickly. If she dies, it's not that big of a deal. Although I think she's got some items. Oh, 
Oh no, come on, 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 come on. I don't want to lose my heroes. Maybe been a bit too aggressive here. Go through the front go door there. You get over here. Oh, I, I never captured it. Can't get out and I don't have enough magic. She looks like she's going to die. If I don't get her out now, she's going to die. She's crumbling. Come on, I can get her out, I can get her out. I'll withdraw from the battlefield, but i got to get her out. Okay, here you go. Oh, I, I did myself dirty by charging in here like this. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, I did. A very, very dumb dumb. Very, very dumb dumb here. Big, big dumb dumb. Wow, I have done a very... Okay, this one's going to get out at least. Withdraw. Okay. Get up on the walls, quick. Over here. I did a very, very dumb dumb. I was always going to disband her anyway. But that was very dumb. Quick, up on the wall. Oh, this one might survive. Alright, it's fine, it's fine. It's really not that big of a deal. One with a bad trait died. I was always going to get rid of that, so it's fine. I have to get these three out of here. What's it with me at the start of streams doing dumb shit? Happened freaking with the Avalon campaign as well. Just kept doing dumb shit. I need to get them, like, over here. Alright, they're, they're making a break for it. They're okay. You need to get out of here so you don't get wiped out. Otherwise, they have to recruit another siege attacker. We're all good. We're all good. I think the worst of this bid is over. We're all good. Come on, you can retreat into the settlement here. We're all good. We're fine. Yeah, those are the ones that I needed to keep alive the most. So that's fine. Why aren't those vampire babes not health seeds? These are fresh recruits. <laughs> I just shouldn't have sent them in. Yeah, they're young. They'll be on their um, health seeds eventually. They're just they're just young, fledgling vampires. No, no, no! Come on, over here. Stay stay away from combat.
Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. But yeah, I was way too aggressive there. Way too aggressive. I should not have pushed those vampires in. Because what that's going to do now, having lost that balance of power, it's going to take longer to, to defeat the, the rest of their forces, but we'll be fine. Shit. This one here is gunning for my vampires. Okay, get some of these ones around over here. Should be able to take on regular archers easily enough. There we go. Alright, I'm pretty sure only one of my heroes got killed. And it was one that I didn't really care about. Still got a decisive victory. Um, I'm fairly sure about that. Fairly sure. We lost two vampires. I withdrew one vampire. Uh, and one of them did die. They weren't immortal. Because uh, I chose not to give them immortality. I'm fairly sure that's the case. Yeah, I just lost one vampire. Quickly. No, swiftly, sister. <laughs> it's okay. There was a chance of her reviving, but it didn't happen. And might as well don't occupy, because it'll definitely revolt. She lived! She got revived. I thought she died. She she got revived. We got lucky. It was all part of the plan! <laughs> Maybe it's because you haven't any coffee yet. Doesn't matter. I didn't lose any units. It was all fine. I didn't make a mistake. It was all perfect. All according to plan. Yeah, and I have another one on the way. Who wishes the red kiss? And this guy here has now leveled up enough that we can uh, increase the capacity for vampires. There we go. Good stuff. Oh, man. I'm glad for that. Yes. We got another disciplined uh, one, which we need to get over there. You know what? I'm not really concerned about the um, vampire dying, more so than I am about the items that she has equipped being lost. That was exciting. Yeah, it was a 10% chance of it reviving, so that was good for me. Cool. Legend of Total Luck. Mm, that was that was pretty lucky, yeah. Yeah, because uh, she is adding a lot of power to the army for the time being. I mean, I will eventually disband them, but just not yet. So that was um, that was a good warm up. It's good to have a good warm up for the day, sort of thing. Middenland got wiped out. That's interesting. Maybe that's what uh, Manfred's doing over there. Okay. I didn't drag him into this war, did I? No. Yeah, he has no wars at the moment, which is how I like it. If he just wants to go and ruin all stuff, that's fine. Isabella's leveled up. Yeah, we should give her Bartered Nightmare. That would be a good idea. Yep. Sorry. Bard Hellsteed, <laughs> Bard <of> Nightmare. <laughs> Alright, we gained a bit of money out of that. Alright, this guy here can now be disbanded. There's nine units sitting in there. So this province here might revolt still. I guess I could stop it from revolting by switching this up. And... Let's go with this. We need to get growth. Well, I do need money as well. 
That's all you like for this month? Was it worth it? You don't get to decide that. Hi Legend, how are you doing? Just wondering. You've said that you align with Zinch more than other Chaos Gods, but do you align with Nagash more than Zinch? No, I just, I'm interested in Nagash. I don't align with Nagash at all. I don't think. Nagash isn't a god. Like, in terms of, like... Like, the four different Chaos Gods are... The various uh, character traits are associated with those gods. So, if you're a... If you're a sexual or... or or uh, a person driven to excesses, then you're obviously slanesh focused. If you're a person driven by rage, in, in some degree we are all, every human has some elements of each of the Chaos Gods in them. There's nobody that's so pure that they have, you know, no excess, no lust, no rage, no slothfulness, no cunning, no wisdom, no intelligence, you know. It's just that I feel like my character traits as a human being, I align with Sinch more than the others. But there's elements of all of them in me. Because they're just human traits. Nagash, Nagash doesn't have traits like that. It's not like, oh, uh, if you're a... Yeah, it's just... It's just not the same thing. You can't really align with Nagash. You can be... You can, like, like Nagash, but... It's just not the same thing. St I still haven't gotten a single disciplined or knowledgeable one of these. But I got money, so it's fine. Alright, uh, we can grow this province. Let's let's upgrade Waldenhof. We need to build walls here, just in case they end up attacking us. It's always a possibility. Yeah, we need to get that gold coming in. Oh, those guys are over there. I... Can't do anything about that right now. Let me just see if there's... Now there's no... Law Keeper. Uh, Professor Von Broom did a 5 pounds super chat, but what about the Horned Rat? Uh, yeah, that's... That's just if you're Skaven. So, yeah, you, look, you can you can be align with the Horned Rat and with Cinch simultaneously. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. So... Yeah, you align with the Horned Rat if you're just a, a rat, okay? It's got nothing to do with character traits. You can be a rat like Queek, or you could be a rat like Ichid Claw. Well, obviously I'm closer to Ichid Claw than Queek. Oh, looks like we're not going to have much money to work with here. Now we can get one more vampire. Sorry, one more vampire. So we should probably tag him out for yet another Master Necromancer. A new one. And what I might do is, for one thing, he doesn't get to keep that. That comes back to me. Thank you very much. You can have that one. And we will um, go and turn the Brass Keep into a Sack City while Isabella goes and smashes some more stuff. Tries to be a little bit more careful. Alright, we've got another um, blood... We've got some blood kisses over here, so what should we awaken? What's going to give us the most benefits? Ambush success chance is good. Research rate is... Yeah, we're fine for research rate. Um... Winds of Magic starting amount's good. Reduce upkeep cost all units for... Yeah, it's good. Vampiric Corruption all provinces is really helpful. Alright. Even though I don't like Strigoys, um, I really need that Vampiric Corruption. What if I'm a devout follower of Hashish? Just follow... Believe whatever you want. Okay? <laughs> just, don't, just do whatever you want. I don't know much about Hashish. Just do whatever you want and it's fine. Don't look for me for some kind of rules on how to worship. Yeah, just leave this province as it is. Um, yeah, we need growth. 
more than anything here. Uh, actually, let's go money there. I gotta bring in some more cash. Yeah, there's gonna be a revolt here eventually, so we, we're we going to need to get this one recruiting. We can slow it down a little bit with that. Repair this one, because I need the... Oh, uh, it'll repair on its own, it's just not worth the money. Hmm. Okay. And I think I'll get rid of this, because we've got military buildings bloody everywhere. Which is fine, but it's not what I want. Uh, Old Dorf will definitely revolt at some point. So yeah, if we have a look at Reichland, um, they're all with Ostland, Wissenland, and the Von Karsteins, and the Skull Smashers, and the Leafcutters tribe. Oh wow, Wiesman is owned by Wissenland. Um, we just have to try to keep Reichland alive just a little bit longer. I was researching Blood is Power, because that's a good one. Okay, heroes not with these guys over here. So Vlad is standing outside the settlement because I suspect that they will um, besiege it, but not attack the settlement of Voltdorf. And if they do, they won't get any replenishment, and I, I need some replenishment. Yeah, the region is weak in magic, I suspect as much. Why not Clan Ferric Farm? Super useful place, so Snack can get tons of kisses. Yep, we just didn't go that way, that's all. I'm just in the places where I am. Averland uh, took out Clan Ferric, or oh, to some degree. Cool, they didn't besiege a settlement, that's... Ideal, I guess. I suspected they would. Should thine words displease me? No. What do you think is the best unique campaign war M2, non Vortex? Uh probably Throts campaign. It's Okay, we're back on. So, yeah, the internet had to go through some maintenance. It said it was actually going to be 30 minutes, but it ended up only being, what, 5? So, I wonder if we might actually end up getting a second bout. So, if the internet cuts off again, so, so if the stream just cuts off again, you, you'll know why. And if you're wondering why does this keep happening in the, the streams, you got to keep in mind that I live stream at midnight. The time that Telstra is deciding to do this is actually the right time to do it, because... 99% of people are asleep right now. It's just me. Just me at work, right? That's why it always bloody affects me. Okay, because I live stream at midnight to 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, so I'm just susceptible to that. Um, there's nothing to, that can be done about it. I just got to suck it up. It's just, it's just a disadvantage I have to work with. Anyway, back to the campaign. We are going to go over here and sack the Brass Keep with you until you level up to four. Um, Soon I'll be all powerful. I don't really want Manfred here. I just don't want him gaining levels up though. That's the main thing. I want him to sit here and just not gain levels up. He's, he's at rank nine and he seems to be wasting all of his skill points. Now we can't I don't think we can confederate him yet, nor do I really want to just yet. Um, I guess he can build that settlement up. I look like Ryan Reynolds. No, I don't. Okay, so looking over here, he's got that to rank 3. Uh, Ricky Scotty did a $5 super chat. Alright, thanks dude. Appreciate the support. Alright. Oh, they took it back. That means the sun was, yeah, beat up to shit. Uh, Duncan Keeley did a $30 super chat. Wanted to support you, my man. Rarely can I catch a live stream, but wanted to stop by and support you. Love the VODs. Alright, no, it's my pleasure. I'm glad you like him. Respect, Manfred. Nah, it's not... Don't need to. It's fine. Alright, so over here... Hmm. 
Just thinking what to do. Ostland doesn't hate me. There's gold there for sure, but it's only a tier 1 settlement because they lost it. I'm happy to leave them alone if they'll leave me alone, which is quite likely, I think. We've got a pretty big great power penalty. They're, they're unlikely to attack us, I think. And um, we could go and attack them over here. Finish off Hockland. How many wars am I in? Oh, next to nothing. Okay, we're good. Yeah, let's just go over this way. So they must have no military whatsoever. Yeah, their their forces over here must have just got wiped out. Yes, my sire. Kill them. Did you confederate the Red Duke or discount Gandalf? It's only turn twenty nine. I'm making my way towards them, but we haven't done it yet. I hunt. All right, let's disband a skeleton spear. Shed their blood. Let's see if you can get in there. Excellent. Cool. That way you get the experience. Who do you think is the most powerful vampire legendary lord after the buffs they all get a while back? Uh, really hard to say. They're all very close to each other. You could argue any one of them one way or another. Um, I think the best starting lord is Vlad. That's what I think. You, you could argue that Vlad is the best. Alright, listen, how do you think... Is there any viable doomstack as vampire counter from skeleton crap stacks? Yeah, there's viable doomstacks if you want to do that. I just think that crap stacking is better. But it's entirely up to you. How you want to play. If you prefer doomstacks over crap stacks, that's fine. Sometimes I'd prefer crap stacks. All right, now, I don't want them to just come back over here and occupy this, or just, you know, attack it and take it back straight away, because it's not defended. Um, but I also want to make sure they're not going to get wrecked. Yeah, see how there's this dude over here. If I sack this, this dude will just come down here and take it. But if I go over there... If we lost Altdorf, it's tier 2. It's not that big of a deal. And I'm pretty sure I got rid of all their siege attackers. So they'd have to besiege it for a turn anyway, at which point I'd just come back. Hmm. All right, let's um, let's attack Wissenland. Here we go. Deliver your missive and then get from my presence. I'm gonna call um, Sylvania into it. So I don't think they'll attack Altdorf, but they might. Oof. It's okay, we can handle this, but I have to fight it manually because order resolve will yield. Yeah, too many casualties. The Bad Santa Kemla is still my favorite thumbnail of yours. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that was a good one. Why is this rock campaign the best? Oh, I don't know. I just enjoyed it. Uh, I liked it. It, it. Like There was a sense of urgency, but the game rewarded you for doing the missions. It wasn't punishing. Like That's just how you do a good narrative campaign. You know? Unlike the Realm of Chaos, you know, the, like, the Realm of Chaos had a sense of urgency, obviously, because it's a race, but it didn't reward the player. Whereas, um... I'm in your the, um, Throts campaign, yeah, the player got rewarded. You know? Every step of the way, you get some good shit. And then the final reward? Just, just pretty good. 
You know, it wasn't the most difficult campaign, but the reward fit. Vampires are the weakest faction of the game? No, they're not. Only people who are terrible at the game would think that vampires are the weakest. In Warhammer 2, the weakest faction in the game is Norska. But that's only if you're playing on very hard or legendary. If you're playing on easy difficulty, it's actually one of the strongest. Um, then I would argue maybe the Wood Elves. Or even the... You could argue that the Dwarfs are actually the weakest faction in the game. But then again, it just depends on who you ask. You know, I say that about the Dwarves and some people are like, But I do really great with the Dwarves. Well, you can do great with every single faction. But somebody's got to be the weakest. It's not the Vampire Counts. Is Azag alive? Yeah, Azag's still alive. I like to farm Azag's trait because it's 30% magic resistance. Talking about Throg? No, I was talking about Throt. Throt the Unclean. Because people were asking which is the best campaign in Warhammer 2. And I said uh, Throt the Unclean. I just think it's I think I think it's really well done. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Nakai weakest faction? Yes! Yes, you that is actually correct. Nakai the Wanderer is the weakest faction in the game. Yes. Absolutely. Where's his beastmen? No 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 no. Beastmen are good now. Beastmen are one of the You can actually argue that beastmen are the strongest faction in the game. Ninja Rat campaign the hardest? Nah, that one's easy. You just don't know how to Skaven. All Skaven campaigns are easy. If, if you're good at Skaven, all of them, even Tretch Graven Tail is easy. He's just, you know, not an interesting legendary lord, that's all. How do you build out your Throt armies? I'm so used to weapon scenes with Skaven, I wouldn't know where to start. You just go with, um, monsters. Uh, what's it called? Um... Brood Horrors. Brood Horrors are the way to go with uh, Throt. Brood Horrors are really good, but you got to keep in mind that they're hit and run units. They're not supposed to be left alone in prolonged combat for long periods of time. They're super fast with high mass and get in and out of combat really quickly. And that's what you need to use them for. You blessing me about my boy again? Yeah, well... Yeah. Sorry, Dame Offensive, but it doesn't matter what you say. I am never going to think that Nakai is anything other than complete trash. It is It is the worst campaign. I don't know how you like Nakai. I just don't get it. But, you know, to each their own. <laughs> Nakai is the worst campaign in Warhammer 2. He's got the worst campaign mechanics. Yeah, he's just he's just fucked. He's abandonware. Absolute abandonware. Uh Nakai the Wanderer is the Thrones of Britannia of Warhammer 2 Legendary Lords. Oh shit, we made something that sucked. Let's just pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> Absolute abandonware.
No, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know you get it. Look, you can like Nakai, but you just can't admit that his, his campaign is good. I think in Warhammer 3, he might get a boost at some point. But yeah, his, uh, his campaign sucks. Kai himself is fine though, isn't he? Not really. He's not really that much better than just a regular Croxagore Ancient. What's special about Nakai? He's, as far as like other legendary lords are concerned, he's terrible. Um, he only boosts Croxagores, which are inherently bad units. Um, he doesn't provide any global bonuses. His um, combat capabilities don't really get that much better as he progresses. I, I just don't see any redeeming qualities for Nakai. Only reason to buy that DLC is to get archers at tier 1 towns for the Empire? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Do you think Nakai might get an accidental buff via Slanesh Vassal improvements? Uh, not really, because the improvements made to Slanesh's vassals won't translate over to him. He doesn't buff cross schools by much. Yeah, that's true, he doesn't buff them by much. Middenland's gone. Boris is dead. Good. And does he have anything over here that might be useful? Grave Ward, Dark Pact. Uh, yeah, Unliving Host is best, I think. And, yep, keep working on that. So that's the closest they've been to each other in a while. This region here is slowly coming under control. Alright, let's see what we can recruit this turn. Alright, you need to be heading towards Isabella. What do we got? Devious and nothing. Okay, let's get rid of them. I usually don't get Lord Keeper vampires. I'm not in any desperate need to get um, really high research rate now. Our research rate is currently at 180%. That's good enough for me. I got all the things that mattered. Still not getting the necromancers that we want. What about necromancer lords? Not getting what I want. Yeah, I could really use some more knowledgeable. There's been a few situations where we're running out of magic, and I, ne I need to not run out of magic. Why don't you like getting divine and magic item drop chance? Um, I, I don't think they're getting... Like, the ma magic item drop chance is already pretty high. Like, you can do it if you want, I just don't think it's that important. Skyrim AE or OG Skyrim? Anniversary Edition. I know. I don't think I ever played OG Skyrim, so I'd have to say Anniversary Edition. Alright. We need to focus on economic stuff. Economy also means growth. Rather than military. Needling is safe. Yep. Alright, we got some resources over here, which will provide some money and stuff. That's fine. Yeah, look at this. Province actually under control. That's good. Midden stag. We don't need this. Go with go with money to begin with. Reichland. We really want this province here to grow. They might end up taking it back, but we'll see. May not need to excuse me, may not need to keep that there. 
But just leave it for the time being. It's still not 100% safe. Are you planning to ally with any of the Empire faction using Vlad's diplomacy skill, or is it not worth it? It's not really worth it. Um, there's too many things that can backfire on me for signing alliances with them. I think. Everything died. Still got plenty of money left over. Alright, well, I really don't want this guy just sitting around here, but I, I can't do anything until the public order sort. Does he have any items on him? Yeah, this will help a little bit. If I could just get a buffer of public order here, we can get rid of him. All the good economic build oh, sorry, all the great economic buildings are at tier four, so we've got to try to get growth going. Vampire accounts before tier four are a little bit poor, but once they get to tier four and five, they get super rich. Yeah, put that there. We're eventually going to need it. As for everything else here, I just don't need it right now. This is a good place for this. And that. I don't know about the growth building. Uh, yeah, because uh, no, we only got a few build slots. The other three should be these three. And I don't want to build it just to knock it down later. I guess I don't have to build anything this turn. Well, build everything this time. We could leave a little bit of money in reserve. Okay, now that we've taken out Wissenland there, we can sack Karaburg, weaken them, and uh, make our way down here to fight uh, Wissenland. I fully expect that they will confederate somebody to stay alive, but we'll see about that. So if it sounds rude, but how do you enjoy Tomb Kings when your playstyle is aggressive expansion? Um... You got to think about it, aggressive expansion differently with the Tomb Kings. Um, it's not always, it doesn't always have to be about capturing territory. So it's like this with Skaven. Skaven, I expand very slowly at the beginning of the campaign, but you're building up a fighting force to fight in a later campaign. So it's the same thing with the um, with the Tomb Kings, right? You're leveling up characters. You're getting more uh, jar characters that just generate more canopic jars. And then when you hit like a critical mass, all of a sudden you'll just explode everywhere and just kill everyone. But it, it just takes a little while. So there's various different ways you can look at expansion, um, rather than just territorial. What were you thinking when the trailer for The Hunter and the Beast dropped? I was so hyped for it. Uh, I didn't really care. I wasn't that into Total Warhammer 2 then. Okay, cool. Well, they didn't, um... Oh, crap. <laughs> I was hoping to take out Zothbar before that happened. Oh, we might have to deal with that. No. <laughs> no, I wanted to use it as a sack city. The fucking Sylvania.
Well, I guess we could just finish them off with him. Unfortunately, this guy's not close enough to actually assist. Yeah, he got dragged into our wars. Okay. It's turn 30, but they haven't recruited Volkmar yet, as far as I'm aware. Alright, so I think we'll just sack this, because we don't want to wipe him out. Just sack it just to, uh, just smash him down a little bit. What am I going to do with Isabella? Wow. Okay. Manfred's on the move. Do not sully my presence any longer than you must. Uh, that is not good. That is not good. We are going to have to deal with this, I'm almost certain. It's only a matter of time before he declares war on me. Yeah. And he'll drag Karak Kadrin into it as well. There is no way in hell that Schwarzhafen is going to be able to defend against that. Because they're military allies. They'll get dragged into it. Oh, that, that could not have been a worse thing to have happen to us right now. <laughs> All the luck that we've had is starting to dry up. Um, cause yeah, uh... My axe for war. Like, if I declare war on... No, no, that'll just drag him into it as well. It's your turn 30, the AI hasn't had theirs yet? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, well if I sack the settlement, they'll still recruit him next turn, I suppose. But we gotta clear out some of these forces. Oh, they did have a siege attacker. Alright, I don't think there's anything too dangerous about this. It's definitely... Okay, something is weakening our winds of magic in the area. But we've only got 60 winds. Let's take him out. Send Isabella to deal with the dwarfs, maybe? Hmm, maybe, yeah. Dwarves going to fight orcs, they're just passing. Dwarves will declare war on you if they hate you. He's, he's te they're technically stronger than me. Oh, they're definitely moving to go and fight the orcs, you're right about that, but I think they, they will just declare war on me anyway. Something stuck in my teeth it was super annoying. There's a bit of corn. Alright, uh, let's see. You're on flying stuff here. Um, where are we going to deploy? We should be fine to corner camp. As long as I get rid of the mortar. If I don't do that, we'll be in trouble. Does Isabella and Vlad get bonus together? Yeah, but it's just a melee attack bonus for the lords themselves, so they don't really need it. Their melee attack is already really high. Oh, 
Alright, well the mortars are all the way over here, so that shouldn't be too difficult to take out then. Okay, let's let's not piss this around. Let them get organized over here, and I think we need to waste their ammo because I'm only gonna get a few wins of death because we just we just don't have that much wins. Who could destroy an army of 20 Skaven Slayers quicker? Where's that go Malagor? Um, where's that could do it quicker, but Malagor could do it better. Why didn't you Vanguard deploy just this then? This Vlad's army? Um, I don't think that would have yielded a better result than what we're gonna do. Vanguard deployment can be really useful, but uh, I just didn't think it was the right call here. This won't get them to um, move out of their defensive position because they only do that when they are attacked by magic or range. We don't have any range, but we have magic. So this is why I'm not casting any spells on them right this very second. Good. With the, those mortars destroyed, I don't think they're going to be able to recruit any more aside from Regiment of Renown. But if we keep them leveled low, um, any of their characters, it should be fine. Alright, time to do everyone's favorite game of wasting ammo. This video was fun to watch. I now want to have your voice line. There is a nuke. It doesn't seem it wiped out any of our units. That was a great one. Yeah, I just didn't see it. Because um, the thing is, the units just disappear <laughs> straight away. Unless you're looking at it exactly where it's going to happen. Sometimes you can miss it. And because it's not my army, it's uh, hard to keep track of who was or wasn't alive. Okay, I'm actually taking too much damage there. Move back. Use Vlad instead. Just wait for them to get organized. So, in case you're wondering why, why have I just been sitting here waiting for them? We've only got 60 winds of magic. I can't spam winds of death. So, I need to not be focusing on their crossbowmen. They're always the ones that do the most damage to us. So, by wasting their ammo, it wastes a lot of their balance of power, because we need to basically ensure that a couple of Winds of Death can just give us the army losses, right? Okay, they're going to keep doing this because these units are over here. It just confuses them. Oh, but then again. But then again. Oh, but then again. You know what? I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna, but then they do this. <laughs> I was going to waste their ammo, but then they go and do this. Sorry, I forgot. I turned off blood effects to get the thumbnail today. Yeah. Hopefully I don't end up regretting that. Which DLC do you wish was free? Um... I'm the wrong person to ask about that. I get everything for free anyway, so everything is free for me. Um, I'm just the wrong person to ask about that. Uh, look, I, actually, no, I can't answer that. The blood pack. The blood pack, I wish that was free. I feel like it should be free. In all Total War games. The fact that you pay, like, three or four dollars for it, is it's it's just not good. It's a bad business practice. We've got a bit of wins. Okay, I'm going to try to move up here and put down the uh, zombies on top of them. That can work out pretty well.
Especially because we've got a Crown of Command. You gotta put it down before before they crumble, but unfortunately since they instantly crumbled it didn't, didn't freaking work. Mm, not a not a really great wind of death there, considering how little magic we've got, I don't think it's a good idea. Just keep moving blood. Okay, nope. That guy's just going to keep hitting us over and over again if we're not careful here. See, so I would use heal. Maybe I should. Yeah, I think I should. We're taking too much damage here. I think I'm regretting not wasting their ammo first, but you know, they just gave me such a good wind of death. Okay, well, that cost me a lot of wins there. Should be fine. We don't have anything too dangerous in this army to deal with. Maybe even blobbing up might not be a bit good idea here. Because they're spreading out. Fuck it, let's just go. Stay so kind of blobbed up. Because I still, still think I can get a couple of Winds of Deaths in there. Or at least one more. But after that I want to be able to move out. Okay, I want these guys to go around here. Let's come and assist over here this way. on through if we can. Not too much though. That went in fine in there. He's already damaged. Yeah, I wish I could make use of this, but they don't have any flying units. Okay, now we gotta get around. We gotta get at these guys here, but that's what they're for. But they're just going to take a little bit to get here. about that banned vortex spell it only attacks flying units you can't target ground units with it L like I just said Let's just try to get these guys here off the battlefield. So we can just get the win. What are you doing? Stay there, stay there. That unit there is probably going to get wiped out, but it's okay, it's, it's not a skeleton spear.
Yeah, it's a dead unit. That's okay. It's only skeletons. Good. Good job, lad. Over here. Yeah, we've definitely got this. If I can get over there, there's another good opportunity for Wind of Death. Here we go. It's not going to get much better than that at this stage of the battle. And there's the army losses. Master of the undead. Join me. Cool. I think they could have gone better, but it definitely could have gone a lot worse as well. And definitely better than what Order Resolve yielded. I have a I'm playing a uh, sorry I'm playing a Sisters of Twilight campaign at the moment, and some buildings have kindred costs. Where can I see how many I have or how to gain more? It's just growth. I don't know why CA did that, but it's just it, they just renamed it from growth. That's all it is. It's the exact same mechanic. So kindreds are growth surplus. Do you ever make bats crap stacks with your uh, bloodline lords? No, I hate I hate bats, but I don't know why people want to do that. Yuck. I, don't, I mean, not in real life, bats, but uh, bats in this game. Terrible. Like, if you want to do it, go for it. I, I think it's a bad idea. Low utility unit. Yeah, welcome to the stream, those of you just uh, showing up. It's still people coming in. Had a bit of a, uh, a bumpy start because of the internet disconnection, but uh, yeah. everything seems to be okay now. You want to replace them with Skelly Spears anyway? Yeah, exactly. Right, if we order resolve this. I was just thinking if I fight it manually, I could heal Vlad, but yeah, I'd be fine. Right, a little bit of a risk coming over here like this because of Wissenland, but if we have a look, their armies are... There's nothing anyway, so it's it's fine. They're not going to do anything. Good, yeah, sit inside the settlement there. Good, 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 good. And do we have this? Nope. Nope. No, no thing there. Alright, what does Vlad need? Maybe the hunger would come in handy. A lot of people prioritize getting the hunger, like, early, but I don't. Okay, so I kind of feel like I actually need to send uh, Isabella back over here to fight the dwarfs. 
Or maybe even fight Karak Kedrin first. Welcome, so I won't Problem here is that I need to I need to meet Clan Richter's nest. Hmm, what to do here? But yeah, this can't be ignored any longer. I haven't met any of them, so I'd have to. Let's say declare war on the border princes. But yeah, there is no way we can let this stay here like this. There's no way. It'll take Isabella a few turns to get back, though. But there is no way I can justify it. Yeah, you've got to get back over here as quickly as possible. Soon I'll be all powerful. And I think I'll disband this dude. Because we're going to have to occupy... Oh, hang on. This is going to revolt. Yeah, you'll have to... Oh, oh what? <laughs> oh, because i got lots of single entity heroes. Um... It will be a mass grave. Let me see if my other dudes are available, because he's not going to rank up to 4 here at the moment. Alright, this guy is back. We've also got um, Strigoi. Strigoi's are actually okay at tier 1. Um, hmm. Because we need somebody that's going to be able to fight those lords. Not, a necromancer's not going to be able to handle it. Yeah, I'll save the Strigoi for another time. And this guy here, let's put a point into, yeah, into, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's actually get the hunger. That'll come in more handy in this battle here. Still valiant defeat, but at least he'll be able to handle it all, I think. Zangunaz, vampires, right? That's correct, yeah. Bats are high-speed units and flying, and it is to have some utility because of it, but man, it's not a viable crap stack. Yeah, I agree. Really, it's fine if you want to do that, but I just it doesn't have my endorsement, that's all. You know? If you want to build any army whatsoever, even if I think it's complete trash, you've, you've got my blessing to do whatever you find fun. You know? Just enjoy the game. But yeah, if you're looking for my endorsement on these armies, I'm just not going to give it. Alright, so, this is an interesting scenario here. We can climb up around them up this way. Okay, I need him to waste their ammo. I can't dodge the fireball spell thing, arrows of Akshi, but the arrows need to go. Even him just doing this is um, him doing his worth. Worth. That guy's going to have three of those arrows of action. I think the next one's coming. Yep, here it is. That's number two. Can't dodge it. That's okay. You can't kill me with them. He can just damage me. Do you think that every skeleton crap stack is better with Necromancer just because free regen? Oh, absolutely. I just haven't gotten the traits that I want. I want some Necromancers, but I like Disciplined or Knowledgeable. I actually prefer Disciplined to be in my armies uh, rather than Knowledgeable. Because uh, I have the Knowledgeable ones uh, just make money. But yeah, I'm just not getting them. Okay, that's three for three there. Right, might as well give me a heal. Alright, I got an idea. I got an idea. I'm going to surround these guys completely. I'm going to do a big encirclement because we've got enough troops and they've got a small enough army that I think that this would actually work out pretty well. Do you think Torox could beat 999 kills in the Battle of Pyramid of Nagash? No. I don't think so, no, because 
I don't think there are that many troops that you can possibly kill there. He's ready for a big encirclement. Okay, there's only a few of them left there now. No, no, don't shoot at this. How dare you. Ah, uh, they've only got a few shots left anyway. Alright, cool. They're out. Alright, let's begin the encirclement. And they're just going to sit there and let it happen. But all Total War AI from every single Total War will allow this to occur. There's nothing they can do about it. Uh, at least they try to not let it occur. You gotta give them some credit for that, they don't just sit there. Yeah, that ability doesn't do any damage. It's just an ability for the sake of abilities, really. And this is where you will come to realize how worthless flanking is. We'll have them completely surrounded, but it's just not going to do that much. I think. Oh, it might break these units. We'll see. So yeah, they're completely surrounded there. In Warhammer 3, do you think Vampire Council will deal with Ogres since you can't rely... Or how do you think Vampire Council will deal with Ogres since you can't rely on Angel and Winds of Death? Spearmen. Yeah, just Spearmen. It'll be fine. Ogres bring one army, you bring three. And spearmen them. Use buffs and debuffs instead of... Um... Anything else. Move you up this way. Yep, encircled them, and all it's it's just yeah, it just doesn't do anything. This is why I don't bother flanking most of the time. It's just not it's not an effective strategy. Sorry, tactic. The way to win is by dishing out damage, not by trying to break them. Ineffective. Looking at their archers, <laughs> dishing out more damage than our melee infantry. Uh, it's frustrating. Um, very hard battle difficulty, for sure.
Need to kill this guy. Totally losing against there despite being flanked. Alright, his speed's 45. This one speeds 36. Killing him will make a, a bit of a difference here. But man, he just friggin' legged it out of there. May need to use uh, Vine Hill's Dance Macab to catch up. Legend, why don't you flank? Flank them, Legend. Oh no, we have the enemy surrounded. Let's run. Too scary. Once he dies, this should all fall to pieces. Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. We just simply the army losses anyway. Cool. Is there a cap for melee attack stat, or does it get unnecessary at some point? Um, there's no cap to melee attack. It's just relative, right? If your melee attack is something like... I don't know, 60 points higher than whatever you're fighting's melee defense, then there's no point increasing it any further. So yeah, having a melee attack of like 300 is useless if the if the people are that you're fighting have a melee defense of like 50. It's just wasted. Because you can't go any higher than 92% chance of hitting. Alright, I'm pretty sure it's going to revolt no matter what. But if I occupy it, we'll get... Yeah, just occupy it. I might be able to prevent the revolt for one turn. Yeah, okay, that'll allow me to get back over there. Alright, Hockland's destroyed. Uh, just go with growth. We'll get a revolt up in here and sort it out. Okay, so get rid of um, get rid of these three here and get Skelly Spears because Skelly Spears are. Oh, I can get another recruit slot. Right, let's do that. Skelly Spears are a lot better than swords. All right, now it's just a matter of crossing our fingers and just hoping that the dwarves don't attack us. But yeah, Isabella's gonna come down here and smash a Rooney. You come down here and just. Wait, no. Alright, let's see. What do we got for traits? Fleet-footed and another disciplined shadow wizard. Holy crap. Another confident one of those. It's not what we want. Okay. Cool. Well, if we're going to fight a lot of battles, at least we'll have a lot of... um. Vampires, that'll be a handle it at least. Okay, 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 okay. Public order here over here just got a lot better. A lot better. So what we could do there. They apparently hot fix click drag problem for Warmer 3. Yep, but that's not enough to bring me back to it. Couldn't you raise the dead? Here? No. Do it there. I don't want to raise another army. Like that's it. Those are dwarfs. We're not going to be able to use skeleton spears or whatever to beat them. We're going to need a proper army. Yes, my sire. This one here is trying to get some more going as well. All right, we can justify tactics. I don't mind a revolt occurring. We just need to make sure she's ready. I don't think there's any more raise the dead available here yet. Um, 
I could bring her into... Now. Hmm. Just raise the dead there, but if she leaves this area, it's going to cause a revolt straight away. Yep, just leave that be. Alright, that seems to be all of our movements for the turn. Did that battle earn a blood kiss? Uh, no, because it wasn't their faction leader that we fought. I think it's pretty likely that the Empire will come over here and retake this, and I'm fine with that. Um, they're not going to be able to recruit anything other than trash for a while. Yeah. What I want to do with Vlad is go and take out Wissenland. Although, if they recruit Volkmar the Grim over here next turn, then I'll, I'll hit him. Or should I lose to him? <laughs> mm hmm. Mm, I want to do both. They'll recruit Volkmar over the t over the end turn. All right, here's an idea. Here's an idea. We lose to with Vlad, and then we force march Vlad back over there and wipe out their forces. And whoever this guy here will get. Mm, Yeah, I think that I think that might be a good idea actually. Okay. Yep, upgrade that. Kimper Great is not safe at all. Leave that alone. Blood Knights are in law meant to be as good as Grail Knights in game. They are less so. Uh, depends on what they're going up against. They, they're they on par with Grail Knights, for sure. Um, they're, it's just that they're less cost-effective. That's all it is. But they're, they're on par in terms of just pure stats. But the Bretonians and Vampire Counts are very different economies. And for the Vampire Counts, the Grail Knights just don't really... Sorry, um, the, the Blood Knights just aren't that good. With how the, the optimal playstyle of the vampires go. Alright, well we've still got a lot of money left over, but that's fine. I don't need to spend it on rubbish. Most of these, the problems here are just we need to grow. Yeah, see I don't want to repair this because Whistleland could come over here and attack at any point. Just be a waste of money. What if you could use Blood Kisses for negotiations? I'd be fine with that, yeah. Alright, let's just hope that the dwarves don't declare war on us. Please tell me that that is Volkmar the Grim. That'd be great. Alright, they usually do their diplomacy at the beginning of a turn, so they haven't done that yet. Indicating that they're... Maybe not. Maybe not planning to, at least right now, but I'm still going to attack them. I should have taken out uh, Zafbar earlier, but it was just more convenient to do other things. Obviously, you have a lot of things that you can do at any given time, and uh, you choose whatever you think is best. I mean, we absolutely rolled over Ostermark, Sterland, Talabakland, and Hockland quite easily. Foreign Trespasser, Cracker, Gork's Chosen. That's not good. Probably coming in here to try to finish off the Empire. I won't let him. Auckland's going to revolt, but that's okay. Okay. 
All right. Unworkable. Through the back up. All right, I just need you to have a little look around. They may have recruited Volkmar, but he's not there. And Vlad... Yeah, I want him to just push down here, but we're going to eventually... Oh, that's right, they're not that strong. Keep that in mind. So what are you doing? You look into... Oh, you're going after fucking friends. How much stronger am I to him? Okay, well there's an issue. We may need to... Did he recruit... Gorst. Yes, he did. Okay, he has recruited Gorst. That means it's pretty likely that Volkmar ran off with those other generals. Now, if I cancel Manfred's vassalization, will he confederate? I don't know. He's not under a lot of pressure at the moment. Alright, he won't arrive there this coming turn. Now, one of the problems here is that Reichland's turn comes after mine, but before Manfred's, which is a bit of a problem. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem. I may need to keep this guy here to try to screw Manfred over. Because we can't let Manfred take out Reichland. Not going to let it happen. Alright, but I am going to go with Vlad to go and sort out this stuff down here. And you can wound this dude so he doesn't annoy us. Good job. And that gave us a blood kiss. Alright, you get back over here. And just pick up whatever we can. Are you going to continue part? Don't don't ask about tomorrow. Okay. Sorry, I'm not going to answer that stuff right now. Oh, that's right. We lost it. You know, I didn't replace it. Manny will probably feel under pressure once you go to war with the dwarves. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Okay, we got some got a lot of units here that we can get. I'll just take that. Actually get rid of all of these here. And go full spearmen. That's good. And we'll see about capturing Null next turn. Hey Manfred, why don't you come down over here? Alright, support us here. Don't go to don't go that way. Yeah, what we should probably do is keep raising more troops, specifically skeletons, obviously, and uh, get ready to confederate Manfred yes, my son. when we declare war on the dwarfs. Alright, what do we got in here? Alright, that's fine, and we don't have anything good there. Doors will be the weakest in Warhammer 3, everyone at the bottom, but them become stronger. Uh, Norska, Wood Elves, and Boris of is mostly fixed. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Alright, and this one needs to come back down here. Alright, let's just hope that the uh, army that shows up isn't full of bloody steam tanks. Sylvanius borders. Who wishes the red kiss? What if, what if we bring her along? Isabel. What 
I could even do is maybe stop by Averland. We can probably reach there next turn from here. Maybe. Four settlements. One, two, three, four. Looking at Clan Ferric. We haven't heard a peep out of them. What are they doing? Just that one settlement there. King of Darkness. How many armies do I have after this? Six. Yeah, I really want to get rid of this dude here, but the public order is being maintained because of him. If we take him out of the area... Oh, God. Um... Okay, the public order maintains with him not being in there. I'll be all powerful. Strike out. All right, it should be fine. We can get rid of him now. Yeah, take these back over to. Let's see, what should we construct? There's some stuff to construct at Mordheim. Let's go do that. And at Essen. Okay. I'm just trying to decide what to do with this one here. You know, I think I might actually attack Averland. <laughs> I think I might. This one here needs a lot of training, so if you stay near Isabella, you'll get a lot of that training. Good, I can kind of with there. Uh, if they fix the unlimited magic for IE and keep the same magic system, Lizardmen might be weakened quite a bit. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah, you're not wrong there. We are just not getting the knowledgeable trade in this campaign. It is not coming in. We've only had one knowledgeable vampire show up in 31 turns. How dare they? Is there a chance? Oh, he doesn't have any movement left. I was just thinking, is there a chance I could win with just those two against this? Oh, he's a huntsman. That would be hard to deal with. Uh, thing is, they're going to recruit faster than us. Oh, I could always get rid of... It's too late. I've used up all of his movement. Alright, Krugenheim can be upgraded. Yep, this is a fairly safe region. That's fine. What else can we build? So, Eastern Sylvania is fine. Yep, leave that be. Ostermark. Leave that be for now. Grunberg. Uh, should be fine. Just build the growth building there. Might get taken, but we'll see. Just leave it as it is. And let's move on. Imminent rebellion is going to happen over here. So yeah, at this point here, I think what's happening is I'm quite overextended. I've just taken a lot of territory really quickly. And... Everybody is looking at us a little bit greedily, and I'm, I'm wary of uh, people declaring war on me. How often do traits refresh when you don't recruit and disband? Uh, once every 10 turns. Peace negotiated between Reichland and Whistleland, that's good. Mm, okay, we got a problem here for sure. For one thing, Manfred is not doing what I'm telling him to do. He's not coming down this way. And they're bringing both of these armies over here to deal with Karaburg. I may need to hire like a whole bunch of regiment of renown and just keep it under siege. 
in order to protect Reichland. Thou hast nothing to offer. No. Hey, Legend, how are you today? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Um, how do you think Immortal Emperors will run considering the map size and the number of factions? Probably badly. Performance related questions are something that I, I, have, I have no idea how it's going to run. Hmm. Alright, according to this, Manfred can't get there just yet. But yeah, if we cancel his vassalization right now, it's probably not going to lead to a confederation. Since the dwarfs didn't declare war on me, what that tells me then is that they are probably under a little bit of pressure from the greenskins. They haven't taken the black crag yet, but they have taken Mount Gunbad. I thought they liked guns. Hey, Wolf's Paul, how's it going, dude? Alright, so we definitely want to take uh, Nuln here. That's a good settlement for us. Alright, let me just do a little bit of scouting over here. There's Volkmar. Hmm. See, if I just go and besiege this, they'll sally out against me and it'll come to nothing. If I just stand right there, then they'll just attack me. I don't have tons of Regiment of Renown available. But, at the same time, at the same time, Manfred and... Okay, okay, Manfred is probably going to stand about here next turn. And Gorse is probably going to stand about here. If I then besiege the settlement, if they sally out against me, they'll reinforce. And I can go in and ensure that they get wrecked. Maybe. Maybe. So we, it's not urgent that we have to do this this turn. Uh, I've also got them. Yeah. They're not going to fall this turn. There's no time to come down here, pick up the thing and then get back. Alright, so yeah, I'm leaning towards attacking Averland. Let's do it. I'll speak with Clan Ferric. Because I don't really want to go towards the dwarves just yet. Not really. Because it's not profitable territory. But then again, if we're heading down this way, it would be good to take this pass. And it will make the Greenskins like us a fair bit. Alright, public order over here is better, so that's good. Building this will help. Yo Legend, sorry if this has been asked before, but what's your favourite Lizardman faction and why? Uh, my favourite one is probably Cult of Sotek, which is it's the only one that's actually got cool campaign abilities. I like overpowered shit, and they have some serious overpowered shit. Alright, what's this map here? I might be able to cheese this. Please be the map I'm hoping for. Ah, oh, it's not what I was thinking. Uh, I guess it'll make this work. Let's do this one first. I know you have said no a million times, but now that Wormer 3 is a mess and you keep stream Wormer 2, is there any chance you'll stream Grimhammer 2? For the million and first time, no. <laughs> 
Why play Warhammer 2 and not 3? Um, Warhammer 3 is not as good as Warhammer 2 right now. Just simple answer. You know, I did have every intention of fully migrating over to Warhammer 3 after the launch, but it's it's not as fun as Warhammer 2. Just because something is newer doesn't make it better. Which is unfortunate, because like nobody's rooting for Warhammer 3 to succeed more than me, but it's just not right now. And, I don't know, I'll just get back onto that sinking ship later. Alright, so what we want to do here is take out the artillery really quickly. And we do that with a little something I like to call cheese. So, got to get Vlad up to this point right here. Interesting looking artillery you got there. Be a shame if something happened to it. I love cheese. <laughs> Not sure if we're going to cap the town square this way, but we, we should be able to get rid of their artillery at least. You, you, go stop them. Hold them back. Okay, we're starting to cap the town square. Okay, now we just need to try to... Oh, well, we haven't capped it yet. This is where having a necromancer as well would really help. Almost capped it. I need somebody over here. Okay, we've capped it. Now we just have to hold on as long as possible. We have two summons left. Ugh. We'll see. Okay, Pit of Shade. I might need to overcast the next Pit of Shades in there. That'll kill them. And we're going to need another one over here. Ah, oh, look. They're capping it. Yeah, they're going to cap it. 
I didn't have enough summons, but at least we got rid of their artillery and did a ton of damage. And look at this. We're free to get up on the walls now. They've completely abandoned them. Yeah. So while the A mission didn't really work, it was a long shot anyway, I just didn't have enough summons. We still managed to do a ton of damage to them. Okay, Vlad up on the walls. God, I hope Vlad doesn't fall off the bloody walls. It, it is known sometimes that Vlad falls down. <laughs> Come on, Vlad, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't fall down. Alright, that's a good boy. Sometimes he does fall. Alright, still got a little bit of wins left. Good thing about what we did there is we took out most of their melee infantry. Now it's on the archers left, which are pretty easy to deal with. I mean, also shouldn't be too far off. Oh, we didn't wipe out the Hillstorm rocket battery, though. We are in Swiftly. Uh, Alfman39915 did a 5 dollar super chat. I had Noctilus fall off the ladder once in my game. Easiest gate defense ever. Yeah, it's, it's okay when the AI does it, but it's not good when it happens to you. Yeah, gotta love them bugs. Oh, hang on, I think that's the army losses. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Cool, we'll just heal her up a little bit. And we barely took any damage. Hey, James Black, you don't need to tell people to like the stream. Don't worry about it. It's not important. If people like the stream, they'll like it. If they don't want to like it, it doesn't matter. Just, it's not your job to push it. Just enjoy the... 
yeah, don't annoy people in the chat. I, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but if I'm not pushing for likes, you shouldn't be pushing for likes. Everybody knows how the like and dislike system works. Do with it as you will. Alright, cool. So, Noln is captured. Yeah, there's a good landmark over here. For sure. But it'll take us a little while to get to that point. Just go with uh, growth in this one here. Lord of the night. And if we have a look at Wissenland, they've got another army somewhere else, and we just don't know where it is exactly. Okay, we got to do this. Don't forget about it. Otherwise, they'll sally out, and that would be a problem. All right, I'm not seeing any problems here. Let's see what the... I think this is the, the good map. The map where um, it's good to defend, but hard to... Good to def No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hang on. It's not the best map. Because the further away the walls are from the town square, the, the sort of easier it is. Um, Alright, let's do this. Um, I actually don't want reinforcements showing. Uh, yeah, just, just whatever. Maybe I shouldn't have. I don't know. And suddenly like Spike Cop. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I really don't like to push likes. It just feels like everybody on YouTube knows how the likes and dislike systems work. Just just do what you want to do. The question is, have we got good? Um We'll see. We'll see. Sad day, man, sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Like, I'm not angry at you. You don't need to apologize. I'm just saying, like, people in the chat, generally speaking, don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> so, we just try not to tell them what to do. As long as their behavior is fine, then just, just leave them alone. That's, that's the, sort of my philosophy on streaming. As long as you're not bothering other people, just leave them alone. You know, if you don't want to sub, that's up to you. If you don't want to leave a like, that's up to you. I'm not going to push it. At least you're here. Alright. See how this goes. Push them up over here. So what I want to do is fly over here. And I should be able to summon zombies. <laughs> Straight away. Wait, let me just check this. Yeah, yeah, I can. Right into their town square. Actually, bring them over here. Who's your favorite legendary legend? Um, I think Ikiclaw. I have the most fun with Ikiclaw. I really like playing Vlad and Isabella as well. I like most legendary lords in the game, but I think Ikiclaw is my favorite. Here we go. Have some cheese. So what we do here is annoy them in this area, so that they draw their forces back, just like we did with Vlad. Because I don't I think we've got enough summons here to be able to, um... Get the army losses. Uh, to, to cap the town square. Just don't have enough. This is where you need a necromancer as well. Maybe I should just use Wings of Death. Bring death 
You can stay there fighting, that's fine. Uh, there's not enough units here to justify Winds of Death at the moment. Isabel's getting a bit shot up, though. More important question, who is your least favorite Legendary Lord? My least favorite is probably either Nakai, or Throg, or Tretch Craven Tail. Those are my three least favorite. They're awful. Hate all three of them. For different reasons. Hmm. Alright, well, that didn't really work. So, we'll have to thin them out another way. There's a nice line of them here. I'm gonna... I'm gonna snort this. Oh, yeah. They just made it easier for me. Oh, yeah. Hey, what the... Ugh. Going the wrong way like that. But you literally had a treacherous campaign. Yeah, I know. It was awful, though. Okay, let's start advancing. They don't have any artillery. Let's start advancing. Okay, I don't have any other arcane conduits here. Why is Throt your least favorite lord, but most favorite campaign? I said Throg, not Throt. <laughs> Sorry. No, I like Throt. I don't like Throg. Let's try to punch through the center, through the through the gate, because they'll bunch up, and we might be able to get a good winds of death that way. Just trying to cram too many units in there at a time, because it'll kill our frames. How do vampires match against dark elves? Not very well, but you don't really have to worry about that until the late game. Not seeing great casts. We got some archers over here. That's not exactly amazing. Uh, I might just do it. We still got a good amount of reserves left. Let's maybe try to kill this dude. Uh, Sean Norris did a five dollar super chat. Been a historical Total War fan since Rome one. What are the things you like that Warhammer does that the historical game does not? Um, it, it's not really a question of Warhammer versus history. 
I don't think it ever has been. I, I don't care about the history settings necessarily. So, it really just comes down to, like, how much stuff is there to do in a campaign? And how, like, how fun those things are to do, I suppose. A lot of the newer historical Total War games, such as, like, Total War Attila, have a lot of things that I would classify as unfun. Same thing with, like, Rome 2. Or they've got stripped-down mechanics that just are not fun to deal with. I don't know why Creative Assembly even designed such, like, for lack of a better word, stupid mechanics. So, like, I like Rome 1 and Medieval 2, obviously, because those games, they've got a really good replay value. And I feel like Attila and Rome 2, Empire Napoleon, I just don't feel like they have replay value unless you really like the setting, which I don't care about. But yeah, if they made a historical Total War game that had the depth of Total War Warhammer, I'd probably favor that over Total War Warhammer. They just haven't done that yet. There is no historical Total War game that has the depth that this game does. And don't get me wrong, this game's got problems. Every single Total War game's got problems. You, you tell me a Total War game that doesn't have any problems, and I'll tell you what the problems are. There's no such thing as a perfect Total War game. It really just comes down to, what's your flavor, and what do you prefer? Because nobody is going to like everything. And there is no Total War game that everybody is universally going to love. Guarantee it. Slideshow Siege is my favorite. Yeah, it's a little bit of a slideshow, but it's almost over. God, this guy is hitting pretty hard. Does he have magical blades? No. What's the problem with Shogun 2? I, I thought somebody would ask about Shogun 2 first. Okay. So, Shogun 2's problem is its low scope. It has one of the lowest scopes out of any Total War game. And what I mean by scope is area that it covers and cultures that it covers. Right, so its replay value on the campaign map is extremely low. But what it does, it does very well. It just doesn't do a lot on the campaign map. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't care about campaigns, then Shogun 2 might be your favorite Total War game. But I deeply care about the campaign. Um, to me, battles mean nothing without campaign context, but that's me personally. Um, and that's why I just can't get into Shogun 2. Just can't get into it. If Shogun 2 would like expand out into like Korea and China and Indo Indonesia, I'd be a lot more interested in it, but it didn't do that. See, if Total War Warhammer was like just the Empire, I'd fucking hate it. <laughs> if there was, it was like all you could play was Reichland, Wissenland, Avidland, um, you know, all of these factions, I actually would probably dislike this game, but it doesn't do that. It covers, you know, a good portion of the world, and soon to be the entire world. And it does a lot of things wrong. It does a lot of things wrong. But it also does a lot of things right.
But yeah, Shogun 2's biggest problem is its low scope. You know, if you're a campaign player, it does just doesn't doesn't offer much. Doesn't offer much at all for campaign players. If you're a multiplayer person, Shogun 2 probably has the best experience for you. Although I would actually argue. Yeah, you know, I'd say that Sh Shogun 2 has probably got the best experience for multiplayer because of Avatar Conquest. But I don't care about multiplayer, so. It's lost on me. Empire Total War Warhammer Edition, when? Uh, that would be Immortal Empires, coming soon. Uh, who gains the benefit of strategic movement traits, i.e. does a hero give 5% more movement to an army if it's embedded into it, if that has a trait? Nope. So, if it has the, the trait strategist, it only has extra movement for that character, right? It has to provide campaign movement range for the army that it's attached to, which, like, Warlock Engineers, as an example, they do that. But the strategists don't do that. Which makes the strategist trait suck. Because when a hero is attached into an army, it its movement does not affect the army movement at all, but it does affect the force march movement. So that's the only big difference. But the Lord's trait, for like, um... Root Marcher is an example. That will affect the heroes in their army. Okay, there we go. What's Warhammer 2's biggest problem? Uh, Warhammer 2's biggest problem. Let's think about that. Uh, I would probably say the sieges are... Okay. The morale system in Total War Warhammer is shit. The, the, the way that leadership works in Warhammer 2 is absolute dog shit. Um... Right from day one to Warhammer 3, the, the leadership system in War Total War Warhammer is one of the worst in, out of any Total War game. Um, but you got other tools to deal with it. Um, and sieges are just garbage. Just pure garbage. In Warhammer 1, 2, and 3, walled settlement sieges are trash. Has very little to offer the player. And you got to do them all the time as well. But at least, by cheesing them, I can get big rewards. See, I don't mind going through pain if I can end up with pleasure, if you know what I mean. Like, I'll, I'll go through a tedious battle if I get something that I want. This is what I was talking about before in regard to designing campaign mechanics, or designing mechanics in general. Um, you're allowed to, There are two things that are bad, but you can have one of these things, but you can't have both of them. Right? If you want to make a mechanic that people will interact with, these are the two things, right? They're not mutually exclusive, but every every single campaign mechanic and battle mechanic in the game will fall under these two categories, right? Is it punishing? As in, is it uh, difficult or tedious to go through? Um, it's okay to be tedious or punishing, as long as it doesn't have the second thing. The second thing is, is it rewarding? Okay, if something is both punishing and unrewarding, it fails as a mechanic. Right, that's the problem with the Realm of Chaos. You can't have both. Ideally, you don't want either. It's good if something is neither punishing nor unrewarding. That's, that's, that's ideal. But if you do that, the game will be easy. Medieval 2, for example, most things in that game is neither punishing nor unrewarding. Which is why Medieval 2 is such a fun game for most people. Because everything that you do in Medieval 2 has impact. Nearly nothing punishes you. Like, the worst thing about Medieval 2 is like, merchants. But you can still make profit from merchants. So, Medieval 2 is like a, a benchmark. Or, uh, run 1 of Medieval 2 is, is a benchmark where... Like, you can make a really fun game. But at the same time, those games are just really easy. Because they're, they're, punish they're not punishing. Every other Total War game outside of Rome 1 and Medieval 2 has quite a severe degree of punishment involved in the games. So, Empire Total War, if you're playing on the hardest difficulty, 
guns mitch mismatch between your troops and theirs is extremely punishing um there are uh, some rewarding mechanics in empire total war such as trade trade can be very rewarding uh, and it's also not particularly punishing to go through it um shogun 2 realm divide extremely punishing uh, but it does have a decent reward at the end of it um attila um the Huns are extremely punishing, and the reward is shit. That's why I don't like Total War Attila. So it, it's an example of an extremely punishing campaign that doesn't reward you at the end of it. The tech trees in Total War Attila are extremely punishing, uh, unrewarding. So that Total War Attila does a lot of things right, but also does a lot of things wrong. So Creative Assembly really, really need to understand this philosophy, and they fucking don't. You can have one of those things in a mechanic. Okay, every single mechanic you have to ask yourself, is it punishing and is it rewarding? You can only have one. If you're doing both, scrap it or change it. You have to do it or else it's going to be bad. Ah, uh, yeah, my loot. You can't have both. How would you change leadership? Well, leadership shocks in general just don't do much in Total War Warhammer. So, for example, killing the enemy lord in Total War Warhammer, in terms of leadership values, is really poor. So if you're playing on very hard battle difficulty... Okay, so... It, I'm fine with the game becoming more difficult based on higher difficulty, and I'm fine with the AI getting cheats. But if you make certain mechanics of the game meaningless, due to uh, difficulty ratings, you're... You're making it not effective, right? So the problem with leadership is that if you're playing on very hard battle difficulty, and this is not a problem for normal difficulty, by the way. If you're playing on very hard battle difficulty, all enemy units will get plus 10 leadership. Now, if you kill the enemy general, you'll get a minus 16 leadership debuff on all of their forces, which will decay down to minus 10, which means that if you kill the enemy general on very hard battle difficulty... All you are doing is bringing down their leadership down to base levels. That is garbage. Total War has always been, if you kill the enemy lord, it'll cause problems for the enemy army. It doesn't do that in Total War Warhammer. So there are many instances of morale shocks just being impotent in Warhammer, which is why in many cases, especially on very high battle difficulty, flanking just has no impact especially you know when you're going up against zombies or basic units that have 80 leadership and you fucking sandwich them now if you did that in medieval 2 and you had a unit that had you know nine tiers of experience but it was like a peasant unit and you sandwiched it with two knights it's fucking dead okay no two questions it doesn't matter if it was bracing it's dead same thing with like shogun 2 and rome 1 right not so much um Rome 2. It's got the exact... Rome 2 has the exact same problem with, with morale as um, Warhammer. The, in fact, in Rome 2, it's even worse. If you kill the enemy lord, uh, general, in Rome 2, it is almost meaningless on the very hard battle difficulty, especially in the late campaign, where just about every single unit has the discipline trait, which means that they don't take a morale penalty when the general dies. It's like why... General sniping doesn't do anything. Attila did it right... Okay, in Attila, you kill the enemy general, and it fucking cripples their leadership, and units can't rally if the general's dead. It's really, really good in Total War Attila. And uh, it, it allows you to do maneuvers, right? Like high-speed maneuvers. It's, it's valuable in Total War Attila, and in Rome 1, and in Medieval 2, and in Empire Total War, and in Shogun 2, because killing the enemy general actually makes a big difference. But in Warhammer, Rome 2, Troy... Yeah, in those three games, killing the enemy general... Oh, uh, uh, maybe... No, not so much Three Kingdoms. Yeah, those three games, killing the enemy general, just whatever. It just doesn't really matter. Troy to a lesser extent. If you're playing on hard difficulty ratings. Uh, we don't need to go down the red line with Isabella. Uh, I'll give her, um... Give her that. Hunger. But yeah, you want to make the mechanics in your game meaningful, even on higher difficulties. 
ideally, if you're making a game difficult on higher difficulties, you don't want to have restrictive gameplay, but embracing gameplay. So as an example, in Medieval 2, if you're playing on the, high, high, on the highest difficulty, you actually need to make use of your entire roster and not just nitpick and be like, ooh, I'm going to create a doom stack. It's the, it's the opposite in Medieval 2, right? You want to use your entire roster because that'll give you the most number of troops, which is what you need. But in the other Total War games, such as Rome 2, you want to make use of the fewest number of your rosters because of restrictive gameplay. So difficulty rating should force people to use more of the mechanics, where ignoring mechanics actually punishes the player uh, rather than rewards them. And uh, Rome 2 has it in abundance. And same thing with Attila, where... Um, uh, ignoring mechanics is actually more valuable than using everything, especially Total War Tella. You know, where upgrading settlements is downgrades, upgrading units is downgrades. It's just fucking stupid. Total War 1 and 2 melee cheats are a bad mechanic. Uh, it's, it's not great. There's definitely better ways to go about it. They want to make the game difficult. I understand that. There's ways around it. But I think that the leadership is the biggest problem. Because, like, you uh, you take Rome 1. Do you know in Rome 1, that Rome 1 probably has the highest degree of melee cheats that the AI get. It's ridiculous in Rome 1. Uh, like, peasants can take on Hastati. Uh, like, enemy peasants can take on Hastati in Rome 1, right? But do you know how you get around that? Route them. It's still very easy to route them. And any unit that's broken, their leadership go morale go... Sorry, all their stats go down to zero. So, it doesn't change the tactics. It just means you need to be quicker at doing it, that's all. Spoonie of Salty did a file to the Higher difficulty should make morale necessary and impactful instead of totally ineffective where normal should allow for more flexibility. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, if they want to if they want to make the higher difficulties more impactful and, like, use more tactics, I suppose... Um, they should strip away the morale cheats that the AI gets, and they should make it way more impactful for killing the enemy lord. It should be like minus 40 for killing the enemy lord, not minus 16. Why didn't that get... Oh, right, I need to do both of those, that's fine. I think I got a student, so I'm gonna pop that down. You've got one. You don't have one. So yeah, popping this down on the hero here won't affect the army. I know I got a student. Am I blind? It must have already been a a equipped to somebody. Yeah, yeah, it was automatically equipped. Okay, never mind. Need everything I can get here, I think. Oh, got a better idea. I'll come over here. Why am I taking attrition there? Oh no, I take attrition in their land. That's fine. Stand there. I may need another lord just in case they actually push me away. <laughs> yeah, well, what are you gonna do? Because we've got to stop Manfred from taking this. I can't let it happen. Have you seen the new Top Gun? It's really good, but to Warhammer? I haven't. No. Uh, the the movie I want to see next is um, Doctor Strange, but uh, I wouldn't mind seeing that one as well. But yeah, if you combined all the good mechanics from every single Total War game, you'd have a like an amazing Total War game, and left out all the bad stuff, but 
Creative Assembly, I don't know what it is with them. They just can't seem to identify what's good and what's bad. It just seems like it's random every single time. I just don't understand. Alright, we can auto that and not lose any units. That's good. Maybe should have fought it manually so this guy could have got some experience, but it, it'll be fine. Follow me. Why would you have a struggle, Lord? It's just all I had. Yeah, just out of necessity. Alright, public order here seems like it'll manage, especially if I switch it up to here. We need you to... Yeah, come over here and assist. I feel like there's... Oh, there's going to be a revolt here. I better stop that. Wait. If a revolt occurs... No, no, we don't want Gorse leveling up. He'll be leveled up badly. Alright, that all seems okay. Let's have a look at heroes. We got no more, um, them available. No. No. Good, that's maintaining. Alright, send these over to Nagenhof. Doctor Strange had... Great Sam Raimi vibes. If you're a fan of his, you'll appreciate it for sure. Okay, cool. Cool. Alright, bring these back over here. Because uh, I'll build the tier 3 growth buildings over here. But not this turn, because it's expensive. Michael did a 10 super chat. Especially given how impactful Lords are in Warhammer, it makes no sense that they can just croak it and have little to no downside. But in the older games, an army will wrap purely on positioning. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's primarily... Okay, I was worried for a second there that the internet disconnected, but it was just it was just YouTube having a stream fart. We're, we're all good. So I'll, I'll read out that super chat again. Especially given how impactful Lords are in Warhammer, it makes no sense that they can just croak and have little to no downsides. But in the older games, an army will rout purely on positioning. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that's largely an AI problem for, on higher difficulties, but yeah, you, you're right. Actually, you know what? I might get you to come around over here. You'll go and take Karag Dromar, although there is a large military presence there. Yes. And you're not leveled up. You can't reach Karag Dromar. Uh, you can't reach Schwarzhaven from Karag, Karag Dromar straight away. So we've got a little bit of time to get there. I may need to recruit another Lord over here next turn. But, you know, it's just uh, that's just how it is. Alright, Eschen gets leveled up. Okay, don't wait around for them. Need to get this going. Waldenhof needs walls because at any time they could attack us. We need to be ready for it. And assign skill points to whom? You. Okay. Uh, Flock of Doom is actually pretty useful. Alright, let's see what happens over here. Maybe CA needs to assemble some creative people. It's got nothing to do with creative people, I think. I think it's people in leadership roles. There's an abundance of creative people at Creative Assembly. The problem is the leadership there. Like, people in management roles. Yeah, I figured that they might do this. Ah, oh, 
my friends is back. There's no way in hell we can win that. I don't think... Okay, that's fine. Now we'll see what Sylvania does. I really hope they lose. He's going to make the attack. Well, at least Manfred will get um, the trait. Yeah, he won. We have to prevent them from doing that. <laughs> we have to prevent that. Legend completely missed the pun. I got it. Creative Assembly doesn't have creative people. I got it. I've just... Here's the thing, guys. If I don't laugh at something, it's probably because I've heard it like a thousand times before. Have you had some memorable campaigns that you wish performed better so you can continue? Yeah, it's usually the campaigns I hate the most that um, people enjoy. It's fucking annoying. I'm so glad I built this. Do not take me for a fool. My bloodline calls. They're far enough away that if I besiege this, they won't actually come and help if they if we have to sally out. This action does not have my consent. That's a little bit of a problem. But you're not. Alright, we're gonna need some actual good units here. To deal with them if they sally out against us. So you need to come... You'll need to besiege. What have we got here? Not much. Just get it. We've got to prevent them from capturing the city. We've got to prevent it. Okay, if we've got Pyrrhic victory here... Oh, he still might sell you out. He still might sell you out. Alright, get the... Uh, oh, we're gonna need some big guns. Chuck the Chill Ghost in there. And you... Get in there. Okay, it's unlikely Carl Franz will sally out against us over the end turn. If he does, he's he's dead meat. <laughs> We're trying to keep him alive. This is the, the opposite. Usually I'm playing Carl Franz trying to keep Von Karstein alive. Now I'm the Von Karstein trying to keep Carl Franz alive. I just got to keep him alive until I can confederate Manfred, which I'm just not ready to do that yet, I think. If we have a look at his strength ranking. It's pretty bad compared to us. If I do something like declare war on Salzen, on um, Nordland, they might take Middenland away from uh, from Thingy and might draw their forces away. Um, Averland didn't come down this way. Alright, that's fine. There's Marius Liefdorf. Okay, his army's not that great apart from the mortars. Yes. Where are their armies? Four settlements, one, two, three. Oh, uh, they could be over there. They are not. I don't know where their army is. Well, we'll just clean up shop over here. Well, there's something. That's not their lord, though, is it? They're... No, it's Ibon von Liebwitz. Should just be able to auto this. Yeah, no worries. Why well, keep him alive? I like to farm Volkmar the Grimm's trait. The Vampire Counter is really useful. 
Really, really useful. Right, you just force March straight back to Schwarzhafen. Yep. Alright, I'll stay right out on the open here. With the expectation that this guy will actually force March... Oh, Maris Lethal will come over here to try to save Grenstad. Maybe. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. So I'm not going to hide there. Uh, I'm just going to channeling stance. Why not? Oh yeah, we got this dude as well. Get him to come in. Stay stay at this uh, region for now. Because we don't want to revolt to occur while we're messing around here. Uh, watch a lot of these streams with my daughters. My elders just asked me, why is the rat man playing vampires? <laughs> hey, uh, rats, rats can be vampires too. You never heard of S Scratch McSqueak or whatever his name is? <laughs> Why is the rat man playing vampires? That'll increase our recruit rank for van uh, for necromancers, which would be good, but it's an expensive building. Oh my god. I'm just not getting what I want out of this stuff here. He still doesn't confederate Manfred. I'm not confident that if I cancelled the vassalization that he would confederate. That's my problem here. I'm just not confident that he'd confederate. Six active armies. How are we going over here? Uh, it's still going to take ages to grow. Even with all the growth buildings. It still just takes ages. And we can't get a Banshee to help grow it either. This province will be okay. Alright, upgrade Kappelberg. And, yep. How are we going? It's, uh... Griffinwood. Good, it's under control. That's good. Okay, a mostly uneventful turn. But we'll see what happens with Manfred. We really need him to just totally get fucked here. See, if I stand near Manfred, there's no way Carl Franz would attack. Even though I would try to guarantee his defeat, and we can't... Yeah, just can't do anything here. I don't want to attack Manfred. Do you prefer Warhammer over the historical total wars? And if so, why? It's got nothing to do... I already answered this a few minutes ago, actually. It's got nothing to do with history versus fantasy. Absolutely nothing. I don't favor a game based on history or fantasy. Alright, he's leaving. All right, cool. Cool, 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 cool. They're finding something else to do. If they turn back around next turn, they still wouldn't make it there. So we can sack the settlement next turn and get a blood kiss from Carl Franz. All right, you want to do that, do you? Okay. That's not what I was saying, but thank you. All right, let me read that again then. Do you prefer Warhammer over the historical total wars? And if so, why? Well, I answered that. No. It's got nothing to do with Warhammer over historical total wars. It's 
So I, it was the question. If you want to reword the question, go go ahead. Alright, now, Marius Leapdorf's army is not that impressive, but neither is ours. Mm, there's not much there to work with. Absolutely not. If he besieged us here, he wouldn't win. If he captures the moot... Yeah, yeah, I'd let it. I'd let that happen. <laughs> I'd let that happen. Alright, let's do this. Get rid of these two. The question is not why do you like Warhammer more than historical, it's which do you prefer and why. It's got nothing to do with history versus fantasy. You've got to reword the question. It's got nothing to do with it. You're grasping onto the wrong... Wrong um, reasons for liking these games. It's got nothing to do with it. Alright, well, obviously I have to fight the battle manually, but... It shouldn't be difficult. The thing, the thing is, keep in mind, is that history Total War games are... Like, the difference between one historical Total War game and another is almost the same amount of difference between a historical Total War game and fantasy. Like, the difference between Rome 1 or Medieval 2 and Empire Total War is just as much difference, as far as I'm concerned, as Rome 1, Medieval 2 versus Warhammer. You know? Um, it's not a case of history versus fantasy. It just it never has been. History Total War games are not all tarred with the same brush. There are some History Total War games that I fucking loathe. And there are some History Total War games that I love. So saying, what do you prefer, history or, t or fantasy, it's a wrong categorize uh, categorization of it. It's just, it's just, that's not the issue. It's got nothing to do with history. And it never has. You know, I absolutely love Rome 1, but I hate Rome 2. And that's my favorite setting. It's got nothing to do with it being history. Quickly. Might has fallen. It shall be. He's probably asking why you only make Wemmer content on it. Any other content, say Troy 3K or any other old Total War games. Well, if he is saying that, then say that. Okay, that's the thing. Look, if you answer, if you word your question badly, it's not my fault for answering it not how you intended. If you want to an ask it differently, then I'll I'll answer it differently. And also, I don't really, I'm not going to answer something based on somebody else's interpretation of somebody else's question. Like rephrase your question if I didn't answer it correctly, how you wanted it to. But the question as it was posed to me is like, why do you prefer Warhammer over historical Total War games? And that is just not, that's not got anything to do with it. And it never has. Like there may one day come a historical Total War game that I favor more than Warhammer. But it won't be because it's history. Which ones do you prefer, good Total War games or bad ones? Yeah. It is done. Yeah, there's, there's, for a long time there's been this history versus fantasy crap, but it's just not what it is. Yeah, 
I don't have any more arcane conduits. We've got plenty of wind, so what I could do is pop down some zombies and just soak up ammunition from Outriders. It's not great, but dodging Outrider ammunition is kind of difficult. They don't have that much ammo, and they're armor-piercing, so shooting into a bunch of high hit point, low armor units is a big waste of their ammo. But I would need to do a lot of casts. It's not great, but I'm not sure. Wind of Death isn't going to be very good against them. Yes. Thing is, what's more, what's more valuable? A few rounds of their ammo, or four winds of magic? Times eight. So we get a bit out of that. But yeah, it's what, like what I said before, I don't care if they make a Harry Potter Total War game or a My Little Pony Total War game. If the mechanics in the game are good, engaging, meaningful, then I'll play it and I'll enjoy it. That being said, they can make a Rome 3, which is my favorite historical time period. Absolutely love the, the classical time period. But if they do a bad job of it, I won't play it. Like with Rome 2. Well, I played the shit out of Rome 2, but I don't play it anymore. I don't think I would have played Rome 2 anywhere near as much if I wasn't making YouTube videos on it. Uh, also, I can see where you're coming from when you say that Rome 1 and Medieval 2 are different games, but Warhammer, Three Kingdoms, and I think Trey of Single Entities, which has not been seen before. Yeah, okay, so those... The Three Kingdoms and Troy, I would classify as pseudo-historical. They're not really historical Total War games. They're like, they're mixing the fantasy and history. Which is fine. Like, I think Three Kingdoms does a decent job of it. Like, I don't think single entities work in either game. But it's not not that bad. Like, if you were to ask me what is my least favorite Total War game, I'd have to say Empire Total War. I hate Empire Total War with an absolute burning passion. I think it's terrible. Absolutely terrible. I think... It is the worst Total War game, from a mechanics point of view. But some people love it, and that's fine. It's, you know. But I absolutely hate Empire Total War. While unimpressing at causing damage, this unit is useful as a meat shield, absorbing damage that would otherwise hurt a more useful or precious target. Well, I'm doing exactly what it tells it to do. You go around that way. Can you tell us the strengths of some Total War titles while hearing about the weaknesses of them? You be more specific. Ask for a specific question, a uh, specific Total War title, because um, otherwise, it'll just. I can just start anywhere. Uh, I don't know. Just, you gotta be a bit more specific. I don't really like vague questions because I don't know where to begin most of the time. I can just end up ranting. So try to be specific. Is it worth overcasting because Skellies have shields? Nah, I just use up more winds of magic. And possibly miscast on... Um, Isabella. Yeah, six wins of magic. Eh, nah, don't worry about it. What? Actually, while this one's ahead here, Agreed. I'll jump in and cast a spell on them. Come on, come on, come on. Agreed. Right on top of you. Nice. Now it's can't move. Get in there. Alright, charge in. This is why I targeted the uh, melee infantry with the Winds of Death. Because I thought I could just rush at the missile units. They'll turn around and run away. And get the, um, the ogres to run them down if possible. But yeah, they've got to get pinned down first.
Oh, caught up to them here. Uh, just wait for them to stop moving and I'll shoot them with it again. Ah, uh, that'll do. Starting from Rem 2, as this is my entry into the series, I'm sorry for being not that specific. That's okay, don't have to apologize. Um, I mean, how dare you? No, it's okay. Um, Rome 2. Good things about Rome 2 is nothing. <laughs> I, I think Rome 2 is irredeemable. Uh, the bad things about Rome 2 is pretty much everything. But going, going specifically, um, Rome 2 took away the ability... Rome 2 took away more from the franchise than any other Total War game, right? Features that we still haven't gotten back, such as being able to remove certain units from an army to go and take out like a small amount of force, right? That started with Rome 2. The 644 system, that is a uh, province system where you have six build slots in the major settlements, uh, four, settlement, four building slots in the minor settlements started with Rome 2. Uh, the leadership problem started with Rome 2 where morale is almost meaningless. Um, and really, okay, so one thing that Rome 2 did introduce into Total War games was massive numbers of, um, of playable factions. Uh, pl of just available factions, not necessarily playable. But there were absolutely tons of factions on the campaign map in Rome 2. Um, if that's something that you value, you know, cool. But yeah, apart from that, Rome 2 is almost irredeemable. Um, the the reason I think that some people play Rome 2 is for one, the setting. Can't go wrong with the setting, right? But the other thing is that there are some mods that make Rome 2 bearable. But apart from that, Rome 2 is practically irredeemable. It's kind of like Empire Total War. Mechanically speaking, Rome 2 and Empire Total War are irredeemable. Absolute blights on the franchise. Alright, why don't you tell me what's one thing that Rome 2 did that was actually good? One thing. It's not, it's not more moddable than other Total War games. It's less moddable than Rome 1. What was it that Rome 2 did that furthered the franchise? Because I can't think of anything. I think it's a, a complete blight on the franchise. And that even to this day, we suffer from bad design decisions that were introduced into Rome 2. That CA just hasn't scrapped yet for some reason. We don't need to run anything down, but I, I should pr try to heal as much as I can. Uh, Musa Tilly did a five euro super. Sorry, five pounds super chat. Hey, Legend, watch today's video and got me wondering: Does an Ikit get unlimited ammo, rattling guns, and other lab bonuses? I think they can. They just didn't in that particular campaign, but I think they ca they can. I think Attila has good battle mechanics. I agree. Yeah, Attila is not irredeemable. Um, Attila's problems are just silly campaign design. Um, but a lot of the battle mechanics in Total War Attila are actually very impressive. Yeah, Attila is not irredeemable, but I still hate it. Because <laughs> its campaign design is atrocious. Rome 2, natal and land battles on one field. Yep, which is scrapped. <laughs> which, a mechanic that got scrapped because it didn't work very well. It tried, it tried, it just didn't do it very well. You can give it a little bit of credit for that, I suppose. Alright, I may need to overcast this next one. Oh, no, we don't have long before they run off the battlefield. No, no, just single cast it. If we don't get all of them healed, it's fine. Room 2 is good after years of updates. How so? What, what about Room 2 is good? Like, I'm... I'm... 
Excuse me. <laughs> I am open to be convinced. What about Rome 2 is good after years of updates? Worse than Warhammer 3 campaign. Total Rotilla. It's comparable. It's, com it's, it's, they, they have the exact same things wrong with them. The javelin throw when charging. Oh, you, you want to? Yeah, okay. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. That that is something that isn't in Rome One or Medieval Two, or Empire, or Shogun Two. The ability to fire while moving. Yeah, it introduced. You could argue that. Arvid Blum Blom did a fifty SEK budget with the new alliance system introduced in Warhammer Three. Which faction would be the best? Ally of Vampire Counts in Wormer 3. Empire for their artillery. Thanks, Super Chat. Appreciate it. Don't think good thing in Rome 2 is the setting. Yeah, I'd argue that. Rome 2 siege maps are much better than Wormers. I actually disagree. I think the sieges in Rome 2 are atrocious. I think they're fucking awful. I absolutely hate the, the sieges in Rome too. Absolutely hate them. But you know, as always, to each their own. But the sieges in Total War Attila, on the other hand, that's different. There's actually meaningful mechanics in the sieges in Total War Attila. But in Rome 2, it's just like, who's got the stronger army? Most of the time. Because towers don't do anything. Uh, boiling oil. Um, the AI avoids it at all costs, so it's never active. Um, like the AI will, n from my experience at least, um, in the later patches. In the earlier patches, the, the AI would just sit under boiling oil, but right now... I believe the AI will just never. If there's boiling oil, they will just not go through the gate. Not unless you uh, remove every single possible way for them to get up on the walls, they won't go through the gate. And yeah, towers are useless. The family tree mechanic now using Vampire Coast. What in Rome too? That's not new. That's not new. That was a stripped feature that they just added back in. That's not new. I'm not going to credit Rome 2 with something that exists in all the Total War games. I understand why people question you on that, because Rome 2 is the second most played historical Total War game after 3K, so people get upset if you shit on me things. Oh yeah, I understand they would, yeah. But I, I kind of get the feeling that most people that play Rome 2... Uh, fall under various categories. One, um, they like the setting a lot, and that's fine, totally fine. Two, they're playing on lower difficulties and just playing casual. Again, fine. Yep, yeah, not a problem. Higher difficulties is just not fun to play Rome 2, because finding battles manually is an absolute slog, um, until late campaign anyway, and um, you can just auto-resolve pretty much any battle anyway. Um, and the campaign mechanics are just an absolute chore. Or three, they love Rome 1, but Rome 1 doesn't work on their computers anymore. Or four, they play Divinate et, et Impera. Not on Legendary Difficulty, because that is not a good mod on Legendary Difficulty. Problem for me with the Divinate et Impera is that it's too easy for me on lower difficulties, and not fun on higher difficulties. Are you in here? Yeah, there he is. Ibon von Liebwitz. Okay, now the problem here is that if I attack him, because he's standing outside the settlement, and he runs away, he won't run away. Yeah, he won't run away. I'm not going to deliberately lose to him, because we just need to keep moving. Now's not the time for farming. To feature yeah, I didn't think he'd run away. Alright, now the problem here is that we're probably going to be surrounded straight away. i got to get rid of that. 
I love fighting Rome 2 battles manually. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. Do you play in very hard battle difficulty on the early game? Let, let me let me ask it. If you play in very hard battle difficulty on Rome 2 in the early game, do you love it? Because I don't. In the late campaign, yeah, they're fine because the melee cheats or the cheats that the AI get by that point sort of don't really matter that much because you've actually got hard hitting units. By that point, like rolling around with uh, levy spearmen, they're just impotent on on high battle difficulty. But when you're rolling around with Praetorians, Praetorians or whatever, they'll just you know mow everything down, even on high battle difficulty. Hang on, I've got... I have Vanguard deploy. I can deploy wherever I hell I want. Apart from in their territory. Your desire. Now we have to make sure that Eben, whatever his fucking name is, gets uh, killed in this battle. Now let them get set up. I don't want to be fighting them from all over the place. Let them get set up. Actually, that's a good spot to go and stand. I'm going to come back up here. Okay, that's fine. Now, I'm not saying as well that Rome 2 is a challenging Total War game, because everywhere it throws bullshit at you, there's a way around it. It's actually a very easy Total War game. You just gotta know the ways around it. The problem is, is that the way to make it easy, or to remove the challenge, makes the game not fun. Whereas, say in Medieval 2, the things that make it difficult actually make the game more fun. Uh, in my opinion, if you want, if CA wants to do difficulty right, what they should be doing is making you, and I've said this before, Force the player to utilize more of the game mechanics, not less. That's what it does right in Medieval 2. It does it wrong in Warhammer, but luckily you still have enough tools to work with. You just can't use a couple of things. But in Rome 2, it's like on high difficulty, it's like you want to try to like get rid of politics. You want to um, um, order resolve as much as possible. <laughs> Do as little diplomacy as possible. So yeah, you're actually doing less on higher difficulties. Where do you think Cathay needs to be better on the field? I think Cathay is fine on the field. How hard do you rank a Drissian Kingdom campaign? Uh, it's only hard at the beginning. It's only hard at the beginning. You get past the beginning and it's fine. Casey Sparks at a 5 dollar In my opinion, 3k is the best diplomacy. I haven't played any, but are Warhammer games close to this level of detail? Uh, Three Kingdoms does have the best diplomacy, for sure. Um... I think Warhammer 3 tried to match that level of diplomacy, but it didn't succeed. It, it's definitely a step up from Warhammer 2, but it didn't quite meet, meet the Three Kingdoms level. Playing a Parthian campaign at the moment on Legendary while watching the stream, and the Citizen Cav that I'm shooting has two men left, and they are confident. Yeah, morale just doesn't mean anything in Rome 2. For most units. What do you think about unhistorical female faction leaders in Rome 2 new patch? New patch. Uh, I don't care. That's fine. You don't have. You don't have to interact with it. You don't have to make your faction leader female if you don't want to. Um, but it, it does give you a few more options. Yeah, you're not forced to do it. And they're, in terms of what they can do on the battlefield, they're no different from men. So it's just. It's just. I guess it's an aesthetic thing. Thing. I, I just don't care. Yeah, that is, that is not a hill I'm willing to die on. I don't care about that one bit. Alright. 
Alright, free company militia. Can't really waste their ammo, but I can waste the crossbows. Any tips on Tomb King's late campaign? Uh, Tomb King late campaign requires you to have done well in your early campaign. So, by the late campaign, you need to have loads and loads of I Love Jars Lords. So, we don't need to do it. But having, throughout your campaign, recruiting a new Lord every turn, putting three points into Jar, economic Jar Hoarder, um, will set you up well for the late campaign. Engine carry back gender in a strategy game? Yeah, it's, well, some people do. They, they, whatever. It's just, I, I, I just don't care. It's like, it's not, um, I, I played the patch with, um, you know, the female generals in Rome 2, and I didn't feel like it made the game worse. I felt like it actually made the game better, mechanically speaking. Um, but, you know, if you have a problem with it, just don't interact with it. And it's hardly the biggest issue that that game suffers from. Funny considering that most battles were won quickly by routing enemies. From a historical point of view, yeah, the, the victor was based on who routed the enemy army. And most of the time, most of the casualties would happen after the, the army would rout. Um... It wasn't a case of 90% of the army died, shit, let's run away. That that was not what happened. It was a case of, oh shit, the cavalry hit our rear, let's run. And then 80% of them would die trying to get away. Sort of thing. Because I think from a historical point of view, the melee infantry that fought up on the front lines, they didn't really try that hard to kill the other people. They're mostly just trying to stay alive. And so they'd fight for hours and hours just pushing and shoving each other because they just didn't want to die themselves. They weren't just going around swinging their swords around being like, I'm a hero. They just wanted to go home to their families. And so um, most of the killing happened after the formations broke. Which is not represented very well in the newer Total War games. Because it's the opposite. And this one... In this... In these Total War games... You know, from Rome 2 onwards... Not not Attila though. Um, it's a case of... I'm a fight to the death for my country! Oh no! 90% of our forces are dead! I'm gonna run now! It's, it's not what would have happened. Would have, would have been the case of... Shit, our Lord is... Our, our General's dead! Good, we don't have to listen to that fuckhead anymore! I'm out of here! <laughs> You know, it was a case of um, the soldiers had to be more afraid of their own general than of the enemy general in order to even get to the battlefield in the first place. But as soon as one side was taken out of the picture, fuck, we don't have to worry about our own general killing our own men. I'm out of here. I'm going home. Fuck this war. I'm going home. Except for the most, like, hardcore of soldiers, which was not the entirety of the army. It was never the case. The nobles got a ransom if the battle lost. Regular soldiers got killed or slavery, no? Um, in medieval times, yeah, I suppose. Depends on when. And this is why in like the ancient times, like just about every single soldier had a shield. The shield was actually more important than the actual weapon. Sword or spear, that wasn't what was used most of the time, it was the shield. Because the shield is going to shove. And the spear was just used to like finish the job. You know, if you had the chance, but most of the time just shoving against each other. Okay, just one more unit to get rid of. And then I think our wind of death, do they have any cavalry? Actually, you know what? I don't need to use you. I'll use, um... I'll use Penumbral Pendulum. How much magic do we have? Oh, not heaps, but enough. Alright, cool. We got rid of all of the units that are a concern. Hopefully that we don't miscast here.
I think it was alright. Alright, this is going to be a really good situation for Winds of Death. Alright, let's get this organized. Do you watch Lindy Beige on YouTube? I have watched a couple of his videos, but I don't watch them regularly. That's why kite shields are created to become an offensive weapon with a pointed edge. Yeah. Is it worth overcasting the pendulum? I did overcast it. Um, you tell me if it was worth it. We got 9,000 damage. Eh, it was alright. Alright, now I don't want these uh, Var guys to go run off somewhere. I'm actually kind of thinking of withdrawing them completely. Because they're just going to get shot by the free company militia and I can't land them. So they're vulnerable. I can't hide them anywhere. Uh, okay, here's something I can do. I guess I can get you to keep those um, free company militia busy. Because they're quite good at shooting them, and I just don't want to land them. All I need to do now is get them to line up here, and then just wind of death them. Probably take one or two winds of death, finish off the entire army. Do you get to the cloud district very often? Um, I used to, but then I took an arrow to the knee. Free company militia can be a little bit of a problem. I'm not necessarily trying to waste their ammo, although that's good. But more just trying to keep them back so they're not going to shoot my VAR guys. Because at least I can... This one's got more missile resistance and I can dodge with this one. Excuse me. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Like I said, I, oh, this one's getting shot. Oh, shit. Those fucking things do a lot of damage. Is there a reason why most Total War content creators stream on YouTube and not Twitch? Well, that's actually false. More people stream on Twitch than YouTube. It's just all the biggest guys stream on YouTube. And the simple answer to that is, why are all the biggest people streaming on YouTube, not Twitch? It's because that's where the audience is. More people watch Total War on YouTube than Twitch. It's just a, just a game of numbers. That's what we want to see. Fucking look at all those kills. Alright, get rid of them now. Oh shit, I need to kill Eben von Liebwitz. Oh, this is not gonna happen. How am I gonna fucking snipe him? When he's taking too much damage, move it back.
Is he healing? No. Yeah, I guess we're not going to get that blood kiss. Because you got to wound him in the battle. I don't think it's going to happen. At least I think that's what we could do. Curse of Years? It's not going to do anything. It'll debuff them, but I need to kill them. Because their army doesn't have any damage output, really. Oh, there he is. Fuck, I can't remember that. You're not immortal yet. Okay, this will probably cause the army losses. Killed my front line a little bit, but it did cause the army losses. Yeah, try to keep him stuck. Come on, move forward, move forward. Keep him stuck. I'm using Karas as a one-man doomstick and the damn Cathay AI come with me with 10 cannons. That's okay. Um, just dodge their shots. Easy. Stay at the maximum range and dodge their shots. In fact, that's a good thing, because if you waste all their ammo, um, that's worth a ton of balance of power. It's easy to beat them that way. Actually gonna work. Don't let him get away. Don't let him get away. Act as it. Tar in front of him. Come on, why won't you fucking land? Ambo's gonna take a while. Yeah, well, it shouldn't take that long. Alright, well, he's going down. It's just... yeah. Is Gates of Troy one of those Total War Saga games? Gates of Troy? I don't think so. So he's using the skeletons to try to make sure he doesn't get away, but it's these two here that are actually going to damage him. Good, restored all the th Okay, we got him, cool. Wow, I really didn't think I was going to get him. Nice. In comparison, there are currently 33 people watching one or two on Twitch. Yeah. Yeah, a Twitch is a little bit different than YouTube because on YouTube, you really have to play to your algorithm. Okay, so on YouTube, um, the algorithm is like the almighty thing that you just have to always please if you want to be successful on it. But on Twitch, it's a bit different. People can do variety on Twitch because people follow for the creator a lot more than they follow for the subject matter. But on YouTube, people follow for the subject matter more so than they create follow the creator. Now, I know we'll get a bunch of people saying, Oh, but I'll watch anything that you do. 
Okay, look, I've been around for a long time. I know how the deal is, okay? I'm not saying that I'll lose... I'll get, like, no viewers if I was to stream, let's say, Fortnite or Ark Survival Evolved, but it would be drastically reduced. Whereas if you're on Twitch, you know, if you... Let's say you stream, like, 200 viewers on Total War, you can go off to other games and still maintain most of your viewership. And I know because I've been on Twitch before. Alright, we got the blood kiss. Cool. Okay, so here's an interesting thing. When we capture Wissenberg, these guys here will probably go and capture the other settlement. Maybe here. Dot them back. Because, yeah, there is no way in hell. Oh, let me have a look at that. Yeah, there is no way in hell that we'll be able to defend against that. Unless they completely run away, which they might. Do you think it's important for factions to be balanced, or is it okay for some to be stronger, weaker, based on law? Okay, for campaign purposes, I think that asymmetrical balance is not only fine, but actually should be encouraged. Um, but for multiplayer, it's unacceptable. So, there, in my opinion, you should balance, have two different balances, multiplayer and single player balances. This is something that Creative Assembly doesn't do. Something that StarCraft does, right? StarCraft does it. There's a different balancing between single player and multiplayer. I thirst. But for some reason, Total War feels like all of the units should have the same stats in single player and multiplayer. All you have to do is just create two different arrays, two different databases. I don't think it's that much extra data, but... You know, having like lots and lots of OP shit in single player, totally fine. But yeah, make, you know, water that shit down in multiplayer, you know, for those people. Because it should be a fair experience in multiplayer, but in single player, nah, it doesn't need to be fair. You know, you could have one faction be like supremely powerful with loads and loads of overpowered mechanics, and have another one being completely impotent, it's totally fine. Because you do actually have that situation. You've got, um, on very hard battle. Very hard and legendary campaign list. Norska is useless on the campaign map. And like vampires, dark elves, high elves, skaven are like supremely powerful on the campaign map. As long as you know how to use them, right? But, you know, all the things that make these factions strong in single player aren't present in multiplayer for the most part. How often do you get compared to Mac from A Toy Sunny in Philadelphia? Pretty much every day. Alright, we can actually sack that settlement now. Oh, there he is. I was wondering where my, my hero was. I just want to make sure there isn't, like, these guys coming around this way. We can see they got military presence of six. I just want to make sure they're not coming down this way. Nah, we're good. We're good. Come on down. Get some experience. Cool, got another blood kiss from Carl Franz. Okay, and we can get rid of all the stuff that take upkeep costs now, because they're not going to be anywhere near as much of a threat. Cool, cool, cool. That way, we keep an eye on them. If they come down here, we besiege it. Yeah, if we have a look at this, are they liked by Marienburg? Marienburg loves them. It's very unlikely they're going to declare war on them. Just got to keep Reichland alive. Cool, this is a good opportunity to level these guys up. Alright, 
All right, so the next thing I want to get is probably this one here for the Vampiric Corruption plus five all provinces. We should also check to make sure the Barrow Legion's still alive. Yeah, they are. Okay, cool. Need to get over there, but we also need to clean up over here. Expand Sylvanius borders. Yeah. Yeah, see, archers... Archers with that much experience will be able to beat our... Our skeletons, even in melee. And she doesn't have Wind of Death or anything like that. Ready. I thirst. Yeah, we don't have access to the Claw of Nagash yet. So, hoping that this one actually comes over to the Moot. That's what I'm hoping for. I would be totally fine with him capturing it. He can't make it there this turn, though. You dare. He's obviously not worried about me attacking it. Uh, I thought you were done with Warhammer 2. What happened to Warhammer 3? I was done with Warhammer 2. I was. But Warhammer 3 got old really quick. And since the update... Like, to, to put it mildly, Warhammer 3's... What's happened with Warhammer 3 is not what I anticipated would happen. I thought that when the game launched, there would be tons of, like, updates and DLC, like, fairly quickly. So, that didn't happen. So, my fatigue of the game, like, happened really quickly. Um, you know, I thought that there would be a Lord Pack by now, but there hasn't been. I thought that the patches would be more radical. I thought Immortal Empires would be out by now. It just didn't happen. So, I just ran out of stuff to do that I was finding enjoyable in Warhammer 3. I like Warhammer 3, don't get me wrong. I hate the Realm of Chaos, but I like Warhammer 3. But, yeah, Creative Assembly just dropped the ball. I don't know what else to say. They just, um... They pissed away the momentum that they, they had very quickly. Braveheart did $2 submission. I freaking love this and hope you continue. Alright, thanks, dude. Let will see how we go. Not going to make any promises at this stage, but we'll see. What? Does losing your capital cause any particular bad effects to a campaign? Nah, doesn't matter. The only, only benefit of a capital is maybe there's a landmark there, or you might lose connection with your trade agreements. Um, but if you lose your capital, it'll just go to somewhere else, and if it's all just connected, then it doesn't matter one bit. Yeah, your capital does not matter one bit in uh, this. Alright, yeah, we need to make sure that gets walled up. We've got a bit of money. Our income's looking pretty good. For turn 34. Okay, I can actually tax this now. But it might be better to not tax it, and instead go with growth. Because that'll double the amount of growth up in here. I guess I could build that. Double the growth again. Can we just demolish it later? Beckerfen is kind of like our front line. I should probably... Actually, let's do Nagenhof first. I'll build walls there. And I believe I was sending these guys over to Fort Obistire to upgrade something there. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I can build it now. And let's have a look at heroes, although I'm just spending too much. Man, I've been waiting ages for a good necromancer, but we're not we're just not getting them. Alright, I'm gonna see if I can get some money out of you. I am pleased thou so Oh nice. Thank you, Manfred. Just enough to recruit and disband an idiot. Have you seen Crane Gunner since the patch? They seem pretty OP right now. Thanks for content. I have. It's yeah, it, it's fine, but it's not enough to bring me back to the to Warhammer Three right now. Like, uh, in terms of content, my Warhammer Two content does better than the Warhammer Three ones. I'm not incentivized to cover Warhammer Three right now. I'm just not incentivized at all. I don't enjoy it more than Warhammer Two, um, and I get fewer views and. 
I get I get more disgruntled viewers, which is even worse. Um, yeah, there's no no incentive at all to cover Warhammer three. Okay, what I could do is go over here in ambush stance, right? Yes. It will be done. That way we'll understand his true intentions. If he attacks Schwarzhafen, I can deal with it because the garrison here has actually got some units that I can work with, right? The stuff that can take out um, the missile units. Or he might just bypass us entirely and go to the moot. Or he could be going to Fort Obestire, at which point I'll, I'll catch him, I think. Well, we'll see. We will see. Maybe, maybe actually move a little bit more over this way, just in case. I don't actually want to ambush him. I just. Uh, well, we'll see how that goes. There may be a revolt at Avraham. I'd be surprised if there wasn't. We are go probably going to lose Dutton back. I'd be very surprised if we didn't. But I'll just go straight back over there and kill him. Yeah, to hold off on that. And let's move on. Do you think IE will be mid-August? Maybe. But that's when they said it was going to be. I think most of us are just waiting for Immortal Empires. Oh yeah, I I agree. I think that's just what people are doing. Bone Rattlers declared one Ostland, that's fine. Legend, do you think the Vampire Counts will be divided like Chaos Factions, Blood Dragon, Cast Line Lamy, and Warhammer 3? Not into different races, no. Yeah, they're gonna try this again. <laughs> so okay, whatever, whatever. We, we So Basically, we have to alternate between turns, between sacking it and besieging them, just to ensure that they don't get it, because we don't want them to finish it off. Well, what are you doing? What are you doing, dipshit? Okay, that's fine. Even more incentive for Avalon to occupy the moot. Oh, no. Oh, I got you, bitch. I got you. He doesn't realize I can get him. Yep, like I said, we figured this would happen. There was nothing I could do to stop it apart from like spend a whole bunch of money on Regiment of Renown. But it's not worth doing that. Uh, they may just end up sacking it, which... Pff, whatever. This region's already got bad public order. Yeah, they sacked it. But they may have just essentially killed themselves by doing that. CA said on Twitter that they have a hotfix. Did you download it? They tweeted two hours ago. I did not because I have no intention of playing Warhammer 3 even with the hotfix right now. Short of like um, disaster battles, which I'd actually prefer to do as few of them as possible. Right? I, I really want to focus on Warhammer 2. I believe the hotfix is for the click and drag bug or feature, whichever way you want to put it. Um, I, uh, it's, yeah, I'll download it overnight. You know, I'm not going to do it right now. Nice blood kiss for me. What do you want? So I kind of want to attack them, but biggins are very dangerous for skelly spam to deal with. I mean, just there's loads of skelly spam. They're not strong enough for me to consider them a concern. 
And I need these guys here to just level up because it's all about leveling up the Lord. So yeah, um, like I said, they sacked the settlement, but they've doomed themselves in doing that. We will need to go up here and deal with the revolt. It's fine. Uh, I should have gotten rid of that. Don't need that. As Sotek, do you think it's a good plan to stay at one province and farm the economic followers and XP for a bit? Yeah, probably. Expanding too quickly as Lizardmen can really lead to disaster. Alright, how long until revolt? Two turns. It's too long. You don't have enough oomph to take it out. Can probably just auto resolve this. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. How come the click drag has become so atrocious? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but they just they did that. I don't know why. Okay. If I want this to revolt this next turn, we need to drop the public order here by... Is it minus 14? I don't think I can go into raid stance. I've used up too much movement. Yeah. See, that'll get it to 93. Minus 93, which means I have to drop it by 7. Let's have a look. So there's 1, 2. No, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Three, four. Five, six. Ooh. If I Vlad moves into a different fun. province, it should cause a revolt. Because I just don't want him hanging around here for too long. That'll cause a revolt. Cool. Cool. Rather than just staying here for an additional turn, just waiting around, get it done now, kill it, get out of here. And then switch this over to this one, so that next turn, public order will be maintained in Whistling. Because this will get rid of all of the instability. You know what, in fact, they may have done me a favor by um, sacking the settlement. Yes. Alright, this may be a mistake. But I guess we'll find out. Right, I want you to go sort that out and get wrecked. My calls. Don't you mess with my Carl Franz. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. How are we going to do this? Order resolve would be bad. We will take a lot of damage. I've got Flock of Doom. Ah, oh, shit, we don't know if those are Twirly Whirlies. How much magic do they have? 40, okay. Alright, I think we can get a good victory here if we fight it manually. Did Vlad have a botched nose job? It just fell off. Why two Vargulds? Does Vlan start with them, or did you have extra just about the power? You mean Vargeists? Um, he actually started off with three, but I lost one. Okay, now we just need to worry about the archers and the wizards. So just wait for them to come in. Oh good, if we stand here, they're actually shooting themselves in the back of the head. Oh, you should you should get hit by it because you have um, regen. Alright, if we stand here-ish. 
Yeah, Flock of Doom will win us this fight, I think, because we, we don't have much wins. But I think we've got enough to wreck the biggins, because they have no protection against it. I doubt they're going to go all the way around here to attack it. So our flank should be protected there. Cool. Cool. The sooner they use up all their spell casting, the better. If we have a look at this dude, it costs him four wins of Metric a pop. Yep, waste all the ammunition of the Night Goblin Archers. And we need to find out if they have Twirly Whirlies. I don't have any zombie summons. So... They won't use it on a single entity. We have to send someone, maybe just one of these regular skeletons, to just go and fight the um, Night Goblin. Oh, what if these are Twirly Whirly Bastards as well? Do you think they may bring back magic as it was in Wormer 2 and Wormer 3? I don't think that was a particularly great update they made. No, I don't think they will, but I agree with you. It is a it was a terrible it was a downgrade. Um, I don't think there's very many people at all, except for maybe multiplayer community that actually like the changes to Winds of Magic. Okay, this is actually causing massive frame rate problems. <laughs> so maybe maybe let's not do it quite so severely. Whoops, come on, come on, come on. I may have caused problems there. Can't you click on their unit card and look at their ability? No, fanatics actually have that hidden. Chances are they're not fanatics, but you've got to be careful because a single one of those twirly whirlies can just fucking wreck your entire blob. Don't they list the spinning loons as fanatics? No, they don't. Not not as the enemy. You can't, as as the opposing force, you can't tell the difference between regular night goblins and fanatics. Chances are they're not fanatics because it's only turn 30-ish, but we can't take any chances. Do you see a CPU streaming at the moment? Yeah, I know, I know. Blobs cause um, massive frame rate problems. I shouldn't have done that. It's starting to improve. Alright, now we need to cast a spell to get them to come at us. Or why? Hang on, hang on. Here's an idea. Here's an idea. Firstly, let's find out where their goblin dude is. He's in here somewhere. Not, not that one. Oh, yeah, good, do that. I'm just looking for him because he's hidden. Oh, they're at the back. Okay. I'm going to bring this guy up, charge into them, and... Uh, Basically just sacrifice him. I just need to find out. Because if they've got Twirly Whirlies, they'll use it the moment they go into melee with him. Do you know about Fanatics? Yeah. So, um, Fanatics are hidden from your intel. You don't know the difference between a Night Goblin Archer and a Fanatic Night Goblin Archer. It looks exactly the same. The only way to find out is to see whether or not they'll use the Twirly Whirly. Alright, well so far that- okay, this guy's coming in. No, he's not. So far, so good. They're not using it just yet. Okay, if that guy just touches 
this one here. He'll either use it or he won't. All he has to do is touch it. We'll find out. I don't think they have it. I don't think they're fanatics. Did that cast? No, it didn't. Yeah, I don't think they're fanatics. Okay, let's tighten this up a little bit. Of course, it would be pretty funny if they just didn't use it then. And if they do that, we're fucked. We'll have to immediately just push out of the blob. Maybe, maybe, hang on, maybe the first wave go up against just the regular skeletons, just because I'm, I'm really not sure. <laughs> really, really not sure. Let them get wrecked. If we get their health down below 25%, they won't be able to do it anymore. If they do have it, that is. Alright, see how much damage that does. Shit, the Night Goblins came over this side. Move back away from this. I know the archers definitely are not fanatics. I don't think they would have used it by now if, the, if they were fanatics. Yeah, they would have used it by now. Okay, now what we gotta do with these guys? These two need to go and snipe the enemy lord. Yeah, it does a decent amount of damage. I think it's, what, six wins of magic? Yeah. We don't have much, but we're getting more impact than what he's doing. Let's keep some units in reserve. Alright, if I cast now, our regen is going to get real low. Just keep some units in reserve so they're nice and fresh. Yeah, if they were going to do it, they would have done it by now. Killing the enemy lord here will make a difference. A tiny amount of difference. Alright, enemy lord's gone. If we hit them in the rear, we might just break some of them. So how much damage did he end up doing? 17,000. That's pretty good for a low level lord. Great job charging there. You didn't.
turns over here so close to breaking. You can see special range weapons in the description. Not for fanatics. It won't tell you if it's a fanatic or not. Trust me, I've played Vampire Counter. No, I've, I've been tricked by it loads of times. Yeah, your opponent is not informed about whether or not you're fanatics or not. This will be the last cast. Hopefully we inflict the army losses with it. They're all on force march, so they're finished. Cool. I think you used to be able to tell if it was the Fennec, but they changed it. Yeah, you used to be able to tell. Saved von Schwarzhafen. Strugo Lords often get used in multiplayer for some reason. Okay, that's um, there's a good reason for that because Strugo Lords are like rank one, which is what all Lords are essentially in multiplayer are actually pretty good because they have regen by default they're just not good spell casters but the thing is in uh multiplayer nobody's actually a good spell caster because you can't upgrade those spells oh that's nice that'll help next time we're in this situation Alright, they don't count as siege attackers, do they? No. Alright, I want you to go over there and attack the Black Pit. I am going to besiege this and ensure that they don't, don't take it. This guy can just stay here. Wait, can I recruit in this province? No. No, didn't make any difference. Yeah, gotta stay there. Alright, good. And you... That's all I got here. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, so this little area here, they don't realize it, but they just screwed themselves over. Because I can stand here with Isabella, not use up that much movement, and then get her to push him over the other side. <laughs> over there you go. There we go. I figured he'd run. And now Isabella can launch the attack. And we, we have to use both lords. Yeah, that'll give her some experience, which will be good. That's what she needs most. Uh, down, ooh, border princes are fucked. Oh, they don't like us. Knights of Kalidor are still alive. I think Clan Eshin is still alive as well. Have a look at this. Mm, maybe not. Clan Rictus Ness is still alive. Then again, it's only turn 35. It's not that late. Okay, if we auto this, we'll get a close victory and take a lot of damage. But, this army is bloody easy to kill. And it's really experienced. So, we gotta fight it manually, because I need this one here to not take too much damage. 
I'm gonna take that. I I, sh I shouldn't have controlled large armies actually. Neferata and Nagash in the future, hopefully. I'd be very surprised if Neferata at least wasn't in the game. That's, you know, a year from now. Yeah, I should have not controlled large armies. Just because it's, it's got extra stress on the, on the CPU, which isn't good. Okay, maybe maybe don't blob to begin with. That'll put less stress on it. I'll if I'm gonna blob, I can do it later. All right, I want you. No, not you. You to go and soak up that artillery ammo. He'll likely just sit there. Okay, there's a pistol ears. Casualty is low. Let's just straight up lie. Um, it depends. We've got so many troops that the casualties could be lopsided. Given that this one here is going to be under a lot of pressure next turn, it's just not really worth it to risk it right now. Like, it's not a difficult fight. It's just a matter of not being lazy. Sometimes auto-resolving a, a fight, an easy fight, can lead to a more difficult fight later down the track. So we just need to make sure we don't take any damage here, which really isn't going to be difficult. Because that's worth most of its balance of power, and if I get Isabella and just Wind of Death right through this... Because these guys are so experienced, that's actually going to work against them. So I'll use this one here, because I can just heal. So these are just regular archers and pistoliers. Since we do have a lot of regen, I think we should try to waste their ammo. Just let that one do its thing. Because unused up regen doesn't count towards balance of power, so I can just make use of it. Doesn't even cost winds of magic. Yes, this entire pistolier unit is using up all of its ammo. But as soon as I see that bar that lets us know she can't regen any further, she gets pulled out. Can someone tell me if one of the other vampires in this army is called Quickly because I've just seen Swiftly and started giggling? <laughs> You'll find out in a second. So, Pistolier out of ammo. That way I don't need to worry about killing them because all we need to do is inflict the army losses. See, look at that. Victory's in our grasp and I haven't inflicted any damage on them yet. Two units worth of pistoliers out of ammo. Okay, you're probably close to running out of health. Go over here, and let's get quickly over here. Alright, Isabella, you need to get over here as well, because you're the one going to do the Winds of Death. Yeah, but if we waste the ammo of the uh, archers and pistoliers, we don't need to kill them. All we need to do is kill the melee infantry. I think the moral system is fine because we have the army losses mechanic that rewards good decision during the whole battle, not just focusing on one aspect of the game, Lord Sniping. 
yeah, there's no reason why you can't do both. I mean, they had that in Total War Attila as well. They had the army losses and they had special maneuvers. It's just that it makes units like... It makes certain units useless, like um, cavalry charges against um, high-experienced, low-tier units. Uh, rear charging them just becomes useless because, look, their leadership is fucking 93. They're essentially dwarves. You know, no amount of uh, charging into them back and forth is going to do anything. Killing the enemy general won't do anything. Thing is, I utilize like, the army loss system because that's the way to win the battle, but, uh, you know, you should do more than just one way to win each battle. And don't get me wrong, I don't really care that much because, you know, if I want to play for a morale-based um, battle system, then I can just go play Medieval 2 or Rome 1, and I'll be satisfied with that, but you know, I think the game would be better if, if killing the enemy lord wasn't completely useless. Since you can recruit allied units in Warhammer 3, is there a specific unit combination you want to try out once all factions are available? Not really. Oh, yeah, you know what? Uh, playing as Norska, ally with... No, hang on. No. Playing as the Wood Elves, ally Norska, and get some War Mammoths so that you can heal them. Alright, that's good enough. You can go. That's it. Line back up. We should be really close to army losses. If I do an um, if I do a wind of death right through here, that should finish them off. Of course, I got to aim it correctly. What is the least traits? Oh, they're shit. They're not that important. I think that's correct. Ooh, I may have been just a little bit off. Yeah, I was. A little bit too late with that. Shame, because... I reckon that could have caused the army losses. It's just a bit off with it. Alright, well, it's still going to take them a moment to get over here. Still get another Wind of Death, because we've got plenty of Winds of Magic. We just need the Arcane Conduit. Is he got any knowledgeable yet? I've only gotten one knowledgeable character in this entire campaign. Trust me, I've been looking. No knowledgeable lords have shown up, no knowledgeable necromancers, and I've got one knowledgeable vampire. That's it. Which has been a bit frustrating. Sometimes the, the campaign will just like drop heaps of knowledgeable characters on you right at the start, which is really good, because uh, you need those wins. But that's not what happened in this campaign. But who knows, maybe we'll get them later down the track. There we go. That was the correct one. Uh, still not the army losses, though. Yeah, look at that. They throw the pistolets into melee.
Come on, army losses. Nope. Alright, maybe let's try snipe this lord. Oh, it's Marius Leetdorf. We'll get a blood kiss for this. Ready to go. There's no way we got him. Where do you go? Oh, he's over here. Where the army losses at, bro? There we go. There we go. We don't need to um, make sure he gets wounded because he's dead anyway. And that's why we have to fight it manually. Well, I should have the ability to dismount your lord in the combat like Shogun 2. Would be nice. Oh, uh, yeah, that would be. Yeah. Uh, that, do you think about Wolf's crap stack on Dryker and Rakath? Kind of crap, but so much fun to play early on, so I can answer it already. I don't care for it. If you like it, that's great. I don't care for it. Yeah, we got a blood kiss. I am gone. Good. And we got the required blood kiss that we wanted. Kith. Uh, blood kiss for uh, vampiric corruption plus five all provinces, which will help us secure our provinces a lot faster. And if you have a look here, barely any damage done there, and we're in a position where we can take Karagdroma quite easily with this one. In fact, it might make a good sack city for her to get leveled up. And as for you, next stop is Migraulvongabal, whatever it's called. Uh, Soldier22881 did a 5 dollar super chat. Spooky, scary skeleton time. Yep. Yep. Thanks, super chat, dude. Appreciate it. Alright, necromancers. No, fucking hell. Ready. Yeah, how many turns have I got to do this in a rope? <laughs> God damn it. Alright, I probably don't need the walls there, but I'll just leave it for now. Nothing else to build, really. Just yet. Okay, and you can have this. Did it end up? Oh no, we haven't gone through the turn yet. All right, what else are we doing? So we've got this, this, this. Yep, yep, just keep that as it is. All right, we're at the end of the turn. We got a bit of money to construct stuff with. Cool, let's do it. See if there's any economic buildings first. I don't want to upgrade that to tier 3 because I'm going to demolish that eventually. Uh, I'll think about that one. Just let that repair on its own over time. Here's something. Krugenheim should be safe. Yeah, it's safe. I don't need to build walls up here. Mm-hmm. Okay, that all looks good. Alright. So I guess we'll build that. Yeah, this is a problem with uh, vampire accounts before tier 4, right? All their tier 3 buildings kind of suck. But once they get to tier 4, really good buildings. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. We can do it cheaper. Do you need fresh Strike out. Cool. Save some money. I think we saved like a grand on that. All 
Alright, if we don't need to spend any more, just save it for next time. There'll always be other things to construct later down the track. Because, yeah, the vampire buildings are very expensive. Uh, you... Yep, you're done this turn. Cool, let's move on. Imminent rebellion here. That's okay. I want that to happen. It is unlikely that they will besiege the settlement and attack it straight away. It's possible, but it's unlikely. And if they do, whatever. Fucking... It's better than waiting there for another turn. This makes me important. Wait, hang on. The world mm, Vlad is just out of reinforcement range, but we'll just have to wait and see. Alright, these guys have absolutely no military. We need to go finish them off and then enter Bretonia because we need to go and meet with uh, certain people up this way. Oh, let's see if Musulon's still around. I hope they are. Oh, wrong thing. Musulon. Because they are a pain in the ass to revive. Let me just check. Yep, they're still alive. So, same thing with the Lamian Sisterhood. Good, good, good. As soon as I go to war with somebody who's, like, relatively strong, I will cancel my vassalization with, um... Thingy. Do buildings auto repair at the same rate for every faction? Yep. Oh, nice. Nice, that'll keep him busy. That's That was very lucky. That was good. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes it does, but that is very good. Yeah, whatever. That's going to make them hate me more. Alright, well, they're not listening to me. told them to go somewhere else. Now, if I fight the battle and deliberately lose, it won't wipe them out. And I doubt they'll be able to kill off all the units. And I don't have anything particularly good to wiping out um, Manfred's armies there. So what's going to happen here? Okay, cool. Okay, that's good. Extra vampiric corruption. That's really going to help. So looking at Manfred's strength ranking, it's significantly lower than ours. We just need him to be in more wars. How strong are they? They're actually quite strong. Hmm. Crooked Moon is over here. They might actually get confederated by um, Grimgor, which is fine. Alright, what we need to do here is get rid of you. Yeah, auto resolve should be fine. They did have a siege attacker, but like I said, they're unlikely to attack it straight away. And now public order here should maintain. Is Crooked Moon still over here? Yep, okay. Go take Ubersreich. Does he have the campaigner trait? No, he doesn't. Okay, I'll take a little bit of a risk here, knowing full well they don't have enough troops, because it would be good to get a bit of extra campaign movement range. That, like I said, they're not going to do anything. Lord of the night. All right, come on, necromancer, necromancer, give me one. Yes, finally. <laughs> I've been waiting for you. Okay, finally, I get one. Um, I'd like to recruit it close to the front line, but I don't think I'm able to. There's no one out here that's going to be able to recruit it. Uh, we need to recruit it right away so the new ones can show up. Yeah, I just haven't built them out this way. So I'll have to recruit it at Castle Drakenhof. Maybe go and search that ruin just for extra experience. 
But yeah, finally I got a disciplined one. Fuck me. Now it's really, you don't have to, um, trait farm like this. You really don't. But I like it. You know, at the end of the day, you gotta have fun. Yeah, still haven't got a knowledgeable one from there. Money's looking pretty good. Name him Stan Lee. Oh, no, I don't think so. Um, I'm just trying to decide whether or not I should occupy this or sack it. Because this one here does need training. Because this one could come over here and get trained up that way. Oh, fuck me, man. <laughs> it's, I don't, it's okay. Lazy! Let the, hang on. Yeah, hang on. Did I lose more that way? No. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference who I put it on. Ugh. Just gotta do it. I don't want to waste everyone's time. It will replenish really quickly anyway. Disciplined over confident. Yeah, I like that melee attack. I hunt. Yours is and you got any... Yeah, give me that. Oh, one of them revived. Nice. Probably you'll die next turn though. That's fine. Alright, cool. At... Eshin, what do we build here? Wine? Doesn't increase our capacity. No. No. Oh shit, what do we build here? There's no value in any of these buildings. That'll give us extra garrison. Eh, who cares? Eh. What do we build here? I guess I could build a barracks. Yeah, alright, fuck it. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Send these up here, and we'll save some money. Cool. Alright, yeah, should be fine to just keep doing that for a little while. Also, if I had fought the battle manually, I would have gotten more experience. But next time we attack it, it should be a lot easier because the garrison's going to get weaker and we're only going to get stronger. Just curious. Just curious. I don't actually want him to come over here. Alright. Oh, wait. Who, who's strength ranking one, was he? Grimgore's strength ranking two. If I declare war on Grimgore... Nah, I'm way... Way more inclined to declare war on them. I refuse. Chaos corruption from characters? Interesting. Okay, hopefully the public order here will maintain so that I can just leave, because we got loads of vampiric corruption here. Just don't tax it, leave it alone. Don't need to conquer the whole province right now. Our corruption is, through technologies, quite a bit. Yeah, if we put this down here, hopefully it'll just maintain. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it'll just maintain. And what I'm thinking about doing with Isabella is swinging her around over to Zafbar and declaring we're on the dwarfs. If I do that, then we can cancel the treaties with, um, with him. Although, maybe I should take out, um, 
the Skaven first. But whatever the case is, bring her over there. This is, oh, I already read that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And what else are we doing? So over here, we just need to wait. We shouldn't need to stay here for very long, and it's not like it's costing us much. My bloodline calls. Hmm. I need this guy to scout up over here. I just got to know what's going on with the with the greenskins. If they come over here and take Weissmans, it's fine. I'd rather they didn't, but it's fine. How about you come down here and join up with Vlad just to get experience? Public order here will be fine. Good. And let's pop down that. I know I've got wine over here. Wine resource. Maybe I should build the wine resource. Yeah, it's really not that important. We've only really got one trade partner. We're not selling much with him. You like Total War Games, right? Have an FPF. Okay. I, I know exactly what you're talking about with that. Like, Creative Assembly making a first-person shooter game that nobody asked for, right? You gotta keep something in mind. Creative Assembly aren't making the FPS game for you. They're not making it for you. They're trying to tap into different markets. I get that it can be frustrating when they're not making what you want them to make, but they're they're just trying to tap into different things. They're a very big developer, and they want to try do multiple things at once. But yeah, I kind of hope it fails, because if their FPS is like super successful, way more successful than um, Total War, I'm worried that they might actually just forget about Total War. They'll be like, wait, we can make way more money making first-person shooters, just just clones of first-person shooter games, than Total War. Let's not make Total War games. So I'm kind of, I really don't want them to su succeed. <laughs> Because I am not interested in their first-person shooter game. Not one bit. So. It is in my best interest for that game to fail. I think, anyway. I mean, they might say, Oh, we'll never give up Total War. But really, you can't trust anything they say. They're, they're not truthful. Uh, George Griffin did a £5 super chat. Hey, man. Thanks for your hours of countless entertainment over the years. No, it's my pleasure. Thanks, super chat. Alright, we can also go to Waldenhof. Will they make it? Yeah. And upgrade that. Greetings. Now stand before the rightful elector of Stern. I cannot. Destruction. I'll take Shinra's throne. Yeah, I really need them to, like, take a beating somehow. So, Nordland over here. Casting. Yeah. The curse upon the Empire for centuries. What do you want, creature? Could you attack my vassal but not me? That would be really nice of you. Spinning facts, the people asking for it is the execs, and the reason for it is not a, for us fans, it's because they like money. Yeah, honestly, dude, of course they're getting to like money. Why Why would you think they'd even be executives at Creative Assembly? The people at the highest mark of Creative Assembly are likely could give no shits about Total War at all. Um, it's just profit, you know, it's just an investment to them. And I get that, that's totally fine. But I don't have to, I don't have to give a fuck about their investments. You know, I just think it's really weird when people who have absolutely no financial stake in Creative Assembly's success at all seem to get happy when Creative Assembly posts that their company is doing well, but their games are doing like their games aren't as good as what they could have been. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Like, I can tell you right now, Creative Assembly don't give a fuck about whether or not I succeed or not. You know? You know, if I went bankrupt, I don't think Creative Assembly would better know. Why should they? It doesn't affect them. Alright. Uh, wait, 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 wait. We saved up a lot of growth. Maybe we should... No, no, just do it anyway. Build that. Alright, public order here is much better. We can switch over to... No, no, wrong one. To growth. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, what are we doing next? Okay, so we just got Baleful Rituals. We need... Vampire Corruption and Jason Provinces can be very useful. That's pretty good too, but we don't have any of those buildings yet anyway. So let's go with Spread Vampire Covens. Yeah, this province here might fall apart. Oh well. Alright, I think I've done everything that I can. Let's move on. Actually, how about you? Come over here. Because they're not going to sally out against this army here right now. And he needs some time to recover. So thing there, but I probably won't be able to beat it. Alright, and yeah, we'll just see what they get up to. A company where execs don't care about money is a failed company. Yep, absolutely. There needs to be a balance. I I've said this before. Creative Assembly needs the executives. Okay, they just confederated Wissenland, so that means we can capture Grunberg <laughs> and attack something else. We don't want them to only have the... Um, they were at war with each other two turns ago. Oh, Arguelon just declared war on uh, Reichland. That's interesting. Are you having the strongest vampire count like you was hoping to? Uh, it's pretty strong. I don't know if it's the strongest. I've had some very strong vampire count campaigns before. You know, not everything has gone a hundred percent according to plan, but things are things are looking pretty good. Yeah, anyway, what I was saying. There needs to be a balance at Creative Assembly. You need to have passionate developers that care about the game that they're making, which they do have, but they need to have leadership roles, those people, right? And then you need the executives that know how to actually monetize that game. You need to make a great product and then monetize that product to the best of your ability. So you need both people. It can't just be passionate people and it can't just be money makers. You need to have both. It doesn't work unless you have both. So yeah, we can occupy that now. But if we occupy that, we can't occupy Ubersreich. They're not at war with Reichland, right? Oh yeah, the public order is going to go to absolute shit when we leave. This one here can attach to Isabella. She needs a, a ground neck. A necromancer would be really good for her. Um, okay. Oh, that's... There must be, like, beastmen there. Who the fuck did that? I gotta find out who Karakirin is at war with. Yeah, it's the Jagged Horn tribe. They did it. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Okay. So, yeah, we're about to declare war on the dwarfs. We got to get over this way, though. And this province is... Yeah. I can't see any way of salvaging that without putting in a ton of, like, units to just 
keep it under control. But that's one public order. Vampire corruption is going up to 66.7%. I don't know, maybe I'll bring her over there to deal with it, just temporarily. Not right right now, because we've got maybe five or six turns before that'll happen. Why don't you finish Carl, by the way? I, I really like farming the trait from Volkmar the Grim. I really like doing that. It's very good for vampire counts. Right, she'll, this one will be able to jump into that army next turn. Alright, let's have a look. What do we get? Do we get another one? Ready. I'm not confident. I would really like for Vlad to get to Helmgart, but I can't see any way of doing that without first sacking Ubersreich. Can't go around it. I hunt. Agreed for now. I will alone. Good idea. Push this guy out of the way. Hang on. Fight, King of Darkness. Yeah, push this guy out of the way. That's him. I might be able to use him to just get one extra move point. You will be punished. All right, nothing we got to check to make sure that none of these other enemies, yeah, none of them are close by to um, of light. to thingy. I guess what I could do is sack an occupier. Uh, I don't really see. Oh no 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 no! We don't want to occupy the settlement. We just want to sack it, right? Death. Cool. We can just auto this. Oh, right, they lost all of their um, defenses because it's um, just got confederated. Ah, sucks to be you. I know my Forbidden Rod's good. Oh, we might just be able to make it over here. Is confident no good? It's good, I just don't want it, that's all. It's just a matter of personal preference. I, am going. I think I make it to Helmgart. We've got the Hel uh, Claw of Nagash, that's good. And... Oh, 2% movement remaining, perfect. Sometimes you cut it close. Legions of the Dead will give weapon strength, melee attack, and magic resistance for our... Guys, Karak Ziflin. They need to be the first one we kill when we get over here so that they stop bothering the Barrow Legion. I'll probably blow up the settlement so they can actually just go and ruin Dweller. When the game gives you an easy order resolve, why not? I mean, I can definitely do a better job myself, but I'll take it. All right. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to raid a region like that. So if we have a look at them. Okay, they're only at war. Oh. Oh, he's, he's, he's not faring so well. No, we don't want any treaties with him. I may have to revive him. If I, if I don't get over there and stop Paravon right now, that's going to be a problem. Not Paravon, Artois. Okay, now this one here will continue to sack Ubersrak. Good to stay right there. Strike out. Nice. Nice. He should be able to manage. And these two, I think I should send them up here to deal with this. Which they might struggle at a little bit. But yeah, now we can occupy this. That's good. So he likes us a lot. Cool. But yeah, not until we declare war on the dwarfs will we um, bring him into it. 
Hopefully he doesn't come down this way. Instead, go to the Black Pit. Mm -hmm. And owning Helmguard is actually really good because of the osmosis, which we're researching at the moment. We can spread vampiric corruption around the place. Okay. No immortality for shit traits. Yep, he's fine, just leaving there. Alright, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, you know what? If... If... Um... You know who I'm talking about. Um, Volkmar the Grim, if he comes back here next turn, I'll actually send Vlad to deliberately lose against him so that he gets the trait. Yeah. You know, he's been alive for 37 turns. Maybe he can last a little bit longer. He's not under siege at the moment. So, we'll see. We'll see. And at the end of the day, we can revive him. If we have a look at the area, uh, we better hurry. Alright, what are we doing next? Got a bit of money. There's not much to construct that's of any real value. Here's something. Uh, go with growth. Krugenheim's good for this one, I think. Karaburg. Uh, public order's a problem. Oh, we own the whole province. Well, except for Midland, but they're vassal, so it works. Yeah, go with public order. I don't want to revolt. And just go with that one. Although, actually, no, growth will be better. No, we need public order. I don't want problems. You probably already know, but Warhammer 3 just got a hotfix. Yeah, everybody's talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I usually get bombarded with messages. I, I'm, not, I'm not going back to Warhammer 3 yet. The hotfix doesn't fix it for me. I don't know. If, I'll tell you what. If it um, if Warhammer 3's player numbers exceeds... This is based on Steam. Exceeds Warhammer 2, then I'll go back to it. But until then, no. What for? What for? It is not in my best interest to cover a game that is has so much vitriol around it and has a lower player base. You know, I told Creative Assembly I didn't have to cover Warhammer 3 if they didn't fix it. And they so far have not. But, you know, Immortal Empires, we'll see. Okay. Uh, let's upgrade Mordheim. Actually, no, upgrade Essen. Better settlement because of the, uh, the pastures. Also, how do you think one warp grinder is good for Ikit Weapon Team Beam Stack instead of Samella units? Oh uh, yeah, you can do that, it's just not as good as a Plague Priest. You absolutely can do it. Alright, Grunberg looks pretty safe, we should be able to do that. Because that'll allow us to recruit Necromancers over here. Alright, I'm going to do something a little bit on the expensive side, but... I want knowledgeable, so I'm going to recruit and disband a Master Necromancer in the hope that the next one might be knowledgeable. <laughs> I got the money, whatever. Alright, um, we have some levels up around. Who's going to pop that down? The world will drown in blood. Cool, his red line is sorted now. And you do get immortality because you're knowledgeable. Yeah, that's good. And this guy's leveled up. That's good. Alright, Curse of Undeath is good. Um, yeah, get the Curse of Undeath. We'll get Razor Dead next time. Alright, we have six active armies. I probably could afford another one. Allow us to move around, but uh, we'll see. Women 3 better fix their shitty UI first. The UI doesn't bother me as much as it does other people. For me, it's all about the campaign. That's where they're failing. The the Realm of Chaos, which I, I just... I've given up on the Realm of Chaos. I don't think they're ever going to fix it. Okay, it is Volkmar the Grim. Alright. Time to farm him. So... With Volkmar the Grim, he will show up four out of five turns because they'll always prioritize 
their faction. Oh, fuck me, man, Fred. <laughs> fuck me, man. Oh, what a dick. You are my bitch. You have to do what I tell you to do. Oh, I can't wait to confederate him. We're very close to confederating him. I just need him to get into a war. Um, against a, a powerful enemy. Maybe Nordland would work. Maybe I don't need to even... Um, Maybe I don't even need to hit. I'm declaring war on you this turn. Yep. They give it, give them their ass right on the stick there. Yeah, if I uh, if I declare war on Nordland, that might be enough. The problem here is that I can't tell how much I need for Manfred to confederate, and if I cancel vassalization. And it's not enough. He may never vassalize. Uh, confederate, I mean. It said that they're going to mobilize towards it, but they went the opposite direction. No military. Okay, great. Not. Alright, I still want to go in here and lose to Volkmar. Yes, I cannot. Yeah. So he likes us a ton. Obviously, cancelling a treaty will change that dramatically. He'll be able to reach Ubersreich this coming turn. So we have to leave the settlement under siege this turn. Unless we cancel the vassalization and confederate him right now. of your life. I am the High King. If only they weren't military allies with them. Alright, he's owned the whole province now. Waldenhof is walled. Alright, I'm going to cancel the vassalization of of uh, Manfred this turn. But before we do that, we're going to get him and drag him into a bunch of wars. Oh, really? I haven't met them yet? Oh, that's weird. Okay. My hand hovers close to my blade. Diplomatically fuck Manfred over. So yeah, he'll still retain all of these wars. He likes us a lot. The more people we declare war on, the more he will like us. All shall know me and tremble. I am unstoppable. Tempestuous? Okay, well that means fuck you. <laughs> Deliver your missive and then get from my presence. Mm, no, not them. Who else can I declare war on that isn't gonna like massively fuck me over? I haven't met them yet. All right, let me just see who who in here could we declare war on that isn't gonna screw me over. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. If we declare war, no, can't do that. I'm just not ready for that right now. Bone Rattlers, no. Crooked Moon, maybe I could get away with that. Wait, which two settlements are they in? This one and, oh, okay, this is all right. Uh, Grimgore is ranked number one. Ah, oh, fuck me, man. You dare approach me. Okay, by doing this, Manfred will definitely confederate. My king, I am pleased. Thou art... 
No! <laughs> Shit! It didn't work! Oh no. I'm gonna need to throw money at him. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Can maybe make this work if I bankrupt him. I can make this work. I promise I can make it work. I will find the money. I could just load. No, I didn't get enough money. <laughs> he won't confed unless he gets wounded. No, I've seen it. He, he will confed. He will. He just. Fellow weakness hearts. Let us... Fellow weakness hearts. Let us discuss the destruction. Maybe I just didn't declare war on enough people. At last. Thy fool. I guess I just didn't declare war on enough people. <laughs> it didn't work. I'm not, I'm not fucking myself over for that. We'll try another turn. <laughs> I really thought that that would work. It just wasn't enough. Maybe you're right. Maybe we need to actually get... Um, maybe we need to get uh, Manfred wounded. Ask him for gifts. I already asked for one recently. We just can't do it this turn. You have to somehow wound him. He was close to doing it, but yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. I'm still going to go and lose to to him, but we're going to have to just besiege the settlement. Um, Alright, we'll just take off your items there. Okay. We're just going to have to... We'll try again next turn, and I'll just see what we can do. It's worth a shot. Oh, yeah, it's worth a shot, but uh, he's not ready to confederate. Usually I do it around turn 50, but he's, he's just causing me too many problems. I want him gone. Hang on. We don't want this guy coming in to reinforce. Kill his armies in battle, Skaven style. Yeah. We can't fight him. He has to like us as well. So... Alright, so in case you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm giving Volkmar the Grim our defeat trait so that I can keep farming him over and over again. Of course, before Vlad leaves the area, he needs to go get the defeat trait as well. I got very lucky. Carl Franz killed both Manfred and Gorse in the same turn. Yeah. Declare one Marienburg. His armies are close and he might fight for those settlements. It's not a bad idea, dude. It's not a bad idea. I think I might do that. But let's just sort this out first. Don't forget the items on her. No, no, they can't steal items from heroes. Only the Lord. Vampire. Only the Lord. Yeah, you can't steal items from heroes. Problem here, though, is that it will cause a heroic victory for Volkmar. We really don't want him gaining experience. Um, so maybe 
if you could come over here and let me think about this. Because if we wipe out 50% of his forces, he'll get a Pyrrhic victory. It just won't be worth as much experience. But I have to kill half of them. So the way to do that... Is just like, shred his other fucking troops here with, with this stuff. Casting. Need to go back and get a heal. Okay, to make sure we don't inflict the army losses on him, send a whole bunch off the battlefield. I meant when he reinforces, you use magic on him. Uh, yep, it just depends on who. I, like, I won't be able to kill Manfred himself. I'll be able to kill off his army. You know, I can't use Gaze of Nagash on Manfred while he's at my ally. But, you know, it's not, not the worst idea. soon. Right, he should get a Pyrrhic victory now instead of a, a heroic victory because he just lost way too many troops. But I guess we'll find out. Ah, piss. <laughs> oh, well. Just kill all of his army, he'll lose the melee. Yeah, maybe, maybe, we'll see. Can't you just reinforce him at this Rakhon settlement? Uh, okay, so there's a, something that can happen because he's got two armies, right? If we stand outside here, he might only send one army, then lose, and then send in Gorst, and then my army's out of the way. So you got to be careful about that when they've got two armies. I've run into that problem before. So we eradicate all that force. Now, this guy here just besieged the settlement. They're not going to sally out against us. And then put everything back on. Actually, Scabrash might be better than that one. Okay, you need your campaign movement range ones, obviously. Alright, yeah, so let's do this. We'll declare war on... Oh, no, no, no. See, this is why I didn't want to declare war on them. If I declare war on... On, um... Marienburg, I go to war with these two, which I really don't want to do right now. So that'll backfire on us. Yeah. We're just gonna have to figure something out about this. Alright, whatever the case is, still just declare war on this dude. Yeah, that's fine. You're reinforcing? Yep, good. Okay, you search this ruin here. Should 
Should I get the Vampire Cats DLC? I don't know. Should you? Alright, uh, yeah, we can just auto that. And that'll be worth another Blood Kiss as well, which is nice. Alright, cool. We've got a good sack city here now for her. Get her leveled up. Good. Alright, and what have we got here? Nothing interesting. This night, it will be done. Now, if we got ambushed by this army, it really wouldn't matter. I don't think she's got the campaigner trait. Let me just check. No, so that's fine. Just force march all the way to here. Alright, let's have a look at what um, heroes we got available. Uh, no. Okay. Do you use Mortis Engines? Uh, if they're available, I, I don't have any available right now. Sometimes I do. They are very expensive when you've got big supply line problems, but they're very, very good units. For sure. Yeah, I can't join war against them because we haven't met the people they're at war with. Alright, what am I going to do with these two guys? They need to find something to train against. Oh, damn, that's tier 4. Alright, let's get over there and see if we can lift that siege. Uh, you just, um... There had to be some heroes up here somewhere. Oh, there's one, there's one. Oh. Didn't register my click. Oh, well. Oh, public order is only just maintaining. That's fine. So yeah, the plan here is to attack him, push him out of the way, or defeat him, whichever. If we can kill him, that'd be good. That'd be another blood kiss, and uh, I'll take the black pit for myself. That way, I can get it at tier three. Yes. Good. As these other ones with actually good traits start leveling up, I can get rid of the the other one, but not yet. Why do you need to give the enemy of lads defeat trait? Uh, because Volkmar the Grim, Volkmar the Grim gives good defeat trait for us. So Vlad's defeat trait allows them to come back every single turn. So that way I can farm it faster. That's all. Immortality for you. Good. Now I can give you items without worrying about losing them. Cool. Once it's Vampire Counts, I use those Skavens on the south for Saxes. end up with plus 400 relation with Thorgrim. Yeah, yeah, that will do a lot for him, because he, he doesn't forget the more you smash someone. But yeah, at the same time, look at what I've done with Tyrakland. He's going to declare war on me eventually. Unfortunately, he does have military alliances. I, I kind of want him to get a military alliance with somebody else, so I can declare war on them, so I can bypass Karak Kedrin. Uh, I could do that by joining war with... Um, Grimgore, that could work. But I gotta get into position first. 
So we'll take Kragmir and then Zafbar, and I'll move Isabella through here. Yeah. Okay, Eshin. Get over there. And upgrade that. Cool. Uh, don't keep that long turn there. Oh, sh shit. Get rid of that. Build this. That's way better. So yeah, what I need to do over here is blow up Karak Ziflin, allow for... Oh, hang on. If I blow that up, they don't necessarily go and do that. Um, but yeah, I will go blow it up. <laughs> We've got to get to Artois before they take out um, the Barrow Legion, because I actually like to farm him for his trait as well. It's really good. Alright, try and save up some money. We'll think about what we can do with Manfred next turn. We'll see. What if I declare war on Lorelorn Forest? And try to get Manfred to attack that. He won't do it, but he might defend Middenland a bit better. How are we going over here? Did he get this to tier 4? No, not yet. I just want him to stop bothering me. I don't mind keeping him as a vassal for a bit longer. But he's just bothering me so much. Lady of Ugh, Athel Lauren. Fucking hate it. them. Deliver your missive and then get from my presence. High born. Hmm, I wanna see if I can get them to go to war with each other. But not this turn. Let's move on. How come sometimes we're unable to encamp even with plus 50% movement? Because uh, some of the heroes are out of movement. So you need to take the heroes out of the army. Yeah. Every single unit in your army has to have above 50% movement. And sometimes the heroes will go below 50%. Especially if you've got something like a, um, a warlock engineer in your army. Alright, cool. He's leaving the area. Good. That gives us some time to at least go and lose to Volkmar. Oh, sorry, not lose to Volkmar. Win to Volkmar. We need, we need um, Vlad to go and get the trait. That way he can just leave the area. You don't want to anger those Manic tree huggers. Oh, uh, yeah, like getting them out of their settlement is one of the easiest ways to kill them, though. Volkmar does not give blood kiss because Carfrance is faction there. That's correct, yeah. I'm not trying to get blood kisses. I'm trying to get the trait. What about attacking Marienburg settlement as the best ally? Uh, the problem is if I declare war on Marienburg, then I will be also at war with... Um, uh, Bretonia, which I don't want. Okay, Clan Grittus built uh, stuff here. Let me see. <coughs> There's nothing there that's causing problems, so I'm happy to just leave it. Yeah, you, you destroy it if there's a problem. Like if they're building a Vermintide. may need to get myself an ogre, my lord, so that I can... I should be able to get some more ogres. Hmm. Uh, just for siege attacker. Oh, wait, hang on. Do we... No, we don't get any regiment of renown that has siege attackers. We have to use ogres. Unless they're... Hang on, let me see if I look here. There's nothing in here that we can raise that has siege attacker. I gotta get an ogre. I've never seen Vampire Counts campaign with 100k gold. That's 10,000, dude. 
That's 11,000. It's not 100,000. Also, hey, Tariff, how's it going, dude? Okay, now you get to see what the defeat trait is for, um... Dingy. Melee defense and melee attack for melee infantry. What's that you got right there? Melee infantry? Oh, wow! Now, you, uh, three may not seem like that much, but I think it is. And there's a good chance that Volkmar will be back next turn, allowing this guy to get the trait. Just gotta watch out for revolts. Of course, Manfred might come down this way again. Sorry, I'm drowsy right now. It's all good. It's all good. I nearly banned you for it, though. How dare you get a fact wrong? How dare you, Tariff? <laughs> Hans Zao did a two-dollar super chat saying hi, Tariff. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, super chat, dude. Yeah, if we get all skeleton spears, they'll be better in order resolve. Did you put the items back in the Lord? Yeah, yeah, I put them all back. See, it's all back. All right, let's have a looky. Yeah. Uh, it's also possible that Carl Franz will confederate someone else, keep himself alive a bit longer, and that's fine if he does. He may end up confederating Ostland at some point, who cares? Although they're currently at war, I think. Yeah, they're still at war with each other. I doubt they're going to send an army all the way down here. Are they defensive or aggressive? Neither. Okay. Alright, so we've got this over here. This should be an easy order resolve. Uh, no, they got rattling guns. Okay. It's not like it's going to be difficult. This is annoying. Got to fight it manually. Check for knowledgeable lord. Ah, oh, yes, you're right. I should do that. Why do you prefer to sack instead of occupying safe regions? Ah, uh, because I'm training up the lords. Okay, see, this is the thing with vampire accounts. Your army doesn't matter all that much, right? It's just, it's all garbage. What matters is the level of your characters. That's the true strength of the vampire accounts. And getting a victory every single turn, it just power levels them up. You know, very safely. That's the whole mindset behind it. Alright, we definitely shouldn't um, blob up. And we can't waste the ammunition of the rattling guns. But I think we've got quite a few arcane conduits that we can do. Gotta watch out for the warp fire throwers. They will fuck us up if we're not careful. Yeah, that's not gonna do anything to us. Skaven slave slingers, night runners. Okay, night runners are pretty dangerous. I'll. Hang on, they're moving. Stand still. <laughs> God damn it. Cool. Taking out the night runs is good. Alright, that'll force them to come at us. Quickly. 
And what we want to do with these rattling guns is stop them from reaching the front line by popping down zombies on them. Actually, you know what? The um, warp fire throwers are actually kind of more of a threat. No, 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 no. no. So it did do damage there. Try to get them to just completely exhaust themselves. damage from these fucking rattling guns. Oh shit, Isabella. I shouldn't have landed. Oh god, get her out of there, <laughs> fuck. I told you the rattling guns are fucking dangerous. Uh, Torch1028 did a 5 plus subject. You've inspired me to start a new Warhammer 2 campaign after 3 kind of burnt me out. I wish I could choose my starter lord, hero straight, I'm on my 4th restart. Yeah, I know. I know that feeling. Thanks to be tattooed, appreciate it. Alright, we got rattling guns over here. Can't blob up in this battle because of the area effect damage. Just gotta charge in. Warp grind is not that big of a concern. I should use him to flank. Good, at least that kept them busy for a while. That's good. This way. Drive on the moon. Your desire. Isabella von Kopstein. Quickly. Need to get over here, stop these from arriving. Oh, that would have been... Okay, I think this is working out. You come in, charge, run him down. Well, that's when he's getting wrecked. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt if we don't. Okay, we're good, we stopped it, I think. This one rallied, can just get back. It's
Okay, all of this seems fine. I can kind of see why in order to resolve it said I'd get a Pyrrhic victory. Because uh, this is a tougher than average Skaven army. But I think we got him. Yep, there's the army losses. Cool. A uh, bit of damage, but we'll be totally fine. And we're going to occupy the settlement and just get rid of Clan Ferric. I'm not looking to farm them. Which faction do you think is the most hard to fight with as Vampire Counts? Is it Wood Elves? Uh, no, not necessarily. Um... I'd say Warriors of Chaos, or maybe even Lizardmen. Lizardmen would be very difficult, but the thing is, with Lizardmen, they're so far away from you that you don't really need to worry about it. Like, the closest Lizardmen to you is, like, Oxyodal. Okay, and yeah, just occupy it. Don't don't let it occupy. Clan Ferric destroyed. Noise. All right, next turn we're going to war with the dwarfs. We're gonna make our way up here. I don't think they're gonna come around over this way because they're too busy dealing with greenskins. Now that is on the assumption that the greenskins don't declare war on us over the end turn. If they do, which I don't think they will, but if they do, um, we won't be able to join war and have to fight other dudes as well. Okay, that's good. Can almost get rid of the other ones. All right, next stop for us. Let's see. I think we're done with the turn. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to do with this. Okay, let's declare war on Nordland. Oh! Oh, well, all right then. I didn't realize that had happened. <laughs> I, I wanted the cause that it happened over the end turn. Ill considered. Yes. Oh, uh, better than nothing. I will not obey. Oh, hang on. Before we do that, we need to get a Mornfang Cav, or else we're not going to be able to get inside the settlement. Yeah, I figured he'd run. Hi, I was wondering, since I'm new at the game, I was curious, where is the army losses on your screen? Because I don't see it. Okay, so I can tell based on their um, unit icons, when all of a sudden, every single enemy unit on the battlefield just lose their leadership, or if they've got high leadership, and they, they start flashing white, that's when I know that the, the army losses has occurred. So it just comes from experience. Sometimes I get it wrong, though. Alright, maybe it would be best if we just auto resolved it. If it's going to be decisive victory with low casualties. Whatever, it should be fine. <laughs> James Black, what did I tell you? Just stop it, dude. Stop it. It's annoying. It's not your job. Okay, when it comes to Strigoys, they're such shit spellcasters that I'll actually go down the red line first. What do you want? I refuse. Yeah, we should be fine. We just stay there. I don't think he'll besiege us. 
But at the same time, I don't think this army here is going to be capable of beating that. There's just too much in there. Those great swords can easily take out most of them. Oh, the, then again, he does have Flock of Doom. The region here is weak in Winds of Magic. Nah, there's not enough winds. How come you have a Gulkim general? Because uh, just lack of other options, that's all. He's a Strigoi bloodline, but yeah, I don't like them, but in the early game they're okay. Alright, I think we're done with the turn. Alright, we have a lot of money. It may be in my best interest to just not spend it. Oh, well, let's just see. Usually there's not much to spend it on anyway. Yep, growth is happening over here. It'll get there eventually. And, yep, just leave that be. I don't think I'm really even going to need this. Just leave it for now, though. Alright, Negenhoff. We want probably walls here for now. Flensburg, build this. That's repairing on its own. It's fine. Needling is safe. We could build that. Krugenheim is the safest out of these settlements. Uh, actually, no. Teleheim is the safest. Build that. I'm spending quite a bit of money, actually. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, it's too late. I've already recruited it. I was just thinking I could get myself a... Um... Oh, they take two turns anyway. Never mind. Alright, to save up the money. They'll leave me with 20,000 next turn, because we want to... Hmm, we'll see. Did I already check for heroes? I did, and there's nothing. Oh, right, lords. Let's have a look. Master Necromancers, and we've got nothing. All right, it's only 825, so I'll just recruit another one, because I really want knowledgeable. Those first few knowledgeables are really useful. i are not getting any. Stuff bar's only tier 3. Oh, well. Get rid of this. Build that. Nah, build growth. And let's move on. How would you confederate Manfred in this situation? You seem to be in a dominant position over him. Uh, probably just a massive bribe. The stronger I get, the better, but... I'm not looking to raise any more armies right now. So that should be Volkmar. Did bad Gandalf still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. Oh shit, they assaulted my units. After so many campaigns, do you ever go traditional and build balanced armies after all those hours in the game? Is it boring? Well, actually, using traditional armies is kind of what I did first. Got bored of that. Yeah, now they're coming back here again. So, yeah, it's actually the other way around. Oh, they confederated. Uh, is that really a good thing? <laughs> is, that, is that really a good thing? Yeah, I find using traditional armies in Warhammer 2 to actually be the opposite of fun. I really don't enjoy it. Because they're fucking ineffective. Especially on higher difficulties. If I want to play traditional armies, I'll just play a different Total War game. So yeah, the problem with this now is, okay, we got 30,000 gold. He should confederate. He should confederate. I can now declare war on him outright without having to worry about joining war. Um, his strength ranking is two. 
Well, let's just see if this works, because we want to fight him now. Okay, let's do this. I'm already at war with them, so that doesn't matter. Let's see if this works. If it doesn't work, I'll still load, but let's see. Oh, fuck's sake, man. Alright, if I throw all the money I've got at him... Fucking hell, I just need him gone. We'll see if we can make it work. If not, I'll just load. Oh, what am I doing? Yeah, he's not going to accept that. Alright, let's just see. Alright, if I offered all the money I've got, it says moderate. Alright, let's just see. Wow, he's actually asking for more than last time. This may not work. I think he really does need to get wounded. Yeah, he does not want to confederate unless he gets wounded, it seems. We've got to find some way to get him wrecked. Oh no, there we go. <laughs> okay, it only cost me every coin I had. Uh, should I accept that? I just wanted it to be done. Because he's interfering. My I think I'll accept it. We got to get rid of some of these armies, though. Alright, if we have a look at Manfred, he should have... Yeah, he's got Isabella's trait. And he's got... He's already got, um, Thingy's trait. Let's see how he's been leveled up. All death magic! God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight... Wasted points. Oh my god. And you... One wasted point. Oh my god. So yeah, you you can confederate him with a shitload of money. But now I've stifled my my income. But we'll figure something out, because we'll get loot money. Yeah, much stronger. Oh, that's Marius as well. Alright, so now we gotta clean ourselves up a little bit. Which, uh, let's see. Respec mod? Nah, it'll be fine. I'm not gonna use mods. Alright, well, anything that has any kind of upkeep, let's get rid of it. Oh look, we scored a Blood Dragon, Bloodline Lord there. And this one over here is a Necromancer that's fleet-footed. How did you get leveled up? Yes, whatever. Just get rid of that entire army. I'm not really going to be able to make use of him at all. That'll lower our supply. Oh wait, did I get rid of all the items? No. Because we probably won't be seeing this guy again, ever. Alright, back up to 5 grand per turn. Uh, we have a look over here. I didn't get any good traits there. I've got a I've got a good trait here. I think I might recruit it this turn by disbanding um, swift uh, quickly. Thou darest. Move. Dark magic is mine to command. Oh shit, oh yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Ogre's my lord, good. And now this one here's got Volkmar's trait, so he can go off and do something else. Um, I will... 
Actually, I'll just straight up disband his entire army. The next person to take Uber Shrike, uh, Sack Uber Shrike, Uber Shrike, should actually be, um... Helmand Gorse, because he didn't have it yet. Actually, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't have it. Okay, and then... As for this guy here, we make a note of what trade he's got by doing this. Um, VG stands for um, Volkmar the Grim. Follow me. But yeah, I'll disband him to save money. We'll get him back again later, it's just money's tight. Yes. Right now. There you go. Cool. The true bond cast I am ready. Could be Carl Franz that comes back next turn, but that's fine if that happens. Alright, and then there's this dude over here. Uh, what have you got? Nothing interesting. Yeah, now we have the Confederation penalty. So over here, this is definitely going to revolt. Oh, it's actually not as bad as... Still going to revolt, but it wasn't as bad as I thought. Who wishes the red I could probably get over there in time to stop it, but it's just not an important settlement. What traits are you looking to get a stack on your lord? Okay, some of the best ones for Vampire Account Lords. Um, uh, Volkmar the Grim. Azag the Slaughterer. Um, this one here. Heinrich Kemmler. Um, Karak Kadrin. Throp the Unclean. Throg. Is actually good. Uh, Ikit Claw is good. Various other ones that are far away. Do you take me for a wazak? Don't think so. I'm scared of you, though. I am death, and not the art of you. Not you, coward. Okay. Uh, so I'm actually thinking it might be a good idea to take Zuffbar and then run up over here and take Karak Kadrin. Otherwise, we're leaving um, quite a important province for them to come in into Sylvania. They'll probably take Zuffbar unless I recruit a lord here, which I guess I could do. Um, I probably will need to do that. Should be able to auto this. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And yeah, there's gonna be a revolt. Let's do that. Okay, now as for this one here, it's time for you to go. Oh, your law keeper. The other one is Shadow. Intelligent. Yeah, actually, it should be this one. Yes. Okay, and we attach the disciplined one into Harami. Just being super fussy there, but you'll be fine. Just pretend like we got her killed ages ago, even though we kind of did. Is that, it was the other one, though. Cool. And you need to get that student that we detached. No, wrong one. I think there's another student. Yep. Let me just check if there's another one. Yeah, you've already got it. That's it. That's all the students I've got. So our research rate at the moment is 195%. Uh, what's the best type of general for vampire counts? I'd say Lamian lords are the best. They're really good. So I'm hoping that their military presence is all the way over here, giving me some time to 
get some defenses up in here. Get rid of this. Don't worry about taxing it. I oh, know tax it. Um, okay, at Eshin, we'll recruit a new lord. Let's get... What do we got here? Alright, we'll get a bloodline lord. And just raise heaps of skelly boys. Whatever's available here. Oh, shit. More money. Because, yeah, Isabella's going to have to swing around over here. What? They will know I'm dead. A so what I want to do here is blow up Karak Ziflin, wipe out all of these forces here, and allow for the Barrow Legion to go occupy it. That way I can take Blackstone Post and leave him with Karak Ziflin and use that as a sack city. All shall know me and tremble. Also got this over here. And this guy here I should probably just disband. Doesn't really matter that much. Oh, he got to rank three, uh, tier 3 really quickly. Get rid of this. Um, I will allow yeah, I wouldn't be able to win there. Just... Um, This guy's obviously just looking for low-hanging fruit. It might be in our best interest to let him capture Weisman, but he might blow it up because of all the corruption here. I'll ignore that. Hmm. Hard to say. Okay, what I might do, actually, is sack Karak Ziflin and attack Montfort this turn. Occupy that, use that as a base of operations. We'll see, because we might not wipe out all of Karak Ziflin's forces in one turn. What do you want? Doesn't seem particularly dangerous. I hope. Just gotta watch out for that one. That's it. My axe for war. Yeah. Talk at me in your crude language. King of Darkness. Yeah, it's always going to say we're going to lose the order resolve against dwarfs. But all of this experience is going to work against them. There's a decent amount of magic. It's actually normal here, but with 100 wins of magic plus arcane conduits, we should be okay to handle this. Use the Red Douche Lord to attack army south of it. He can't reach. I already looked into that. To me, it looks like Wormit 3 isn't that much better than launch of Wormit 1. Inherently ambitious, but execution isn't there. No, 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 no. I, like, I was there for the launch of Warhammer 1, and I can tell you right now, Wormit 3 is perhaps the worst launch in Total War history. Not the worst game in history of Total War, but the worst launch. It, it, the launch was really, really bad. I've never seen a launch of a game actively destroy the player base the way that Warhammer 3 did. What do you want? Like, Rome 2 was obviously the worst. Rome 2 and Empire were the worst games on launch, but they weren't... Rome 2's launch... Rome 2 recovered, um... Pretty quickly, actually. Warhammer 3, they just can't get anything right. They're just failing left, right, and center. It's, I would I'd actually go and say it's the worst launch in Total War history. It's so bad. An absolute catastrophe. Alright, so what we want them to do is just go get organized so that we can... We'll probably need to get rid of all the Quarrelers ammo. I won't be able to get rid of all the guns. Yeah. Now, don't forget... I'm not saying that Warhammer 3 sucks. I like Warhammer 3, but what the launch of Warhammer 3 did was actually cut the Total War Warhammer community in half, pretty much. Like, Warhammer 2 was getting around 20,000 concurrents prior to the launch of Warhammer 3, 
and then it got cut down to like 10,000. Yeah. It's, it's a very, very bad launch. So, Creative Assembly need to do a mega launch for Immortal Empires in order to even have a chance of recovering. I, I hope they do. I'm not rooting for them to fail. I'm just... I think it was a big fail. You like Warhammer 3 so much that you're playing 10 year old historical games on stream? Medieval 2. I'm not doing it right now. And it's not 10 years old, it's 15 years old, I'll have you know. 16 years old even. Even Shogun 2 is older than 10 years old. I'm still optimistic about it from Mortal Empires. Me too, I'm optimistic about it. But I tell you what, if the launch of Warhammer 3 had gone better, then there'd be less pressure on them on Immortal Empires. It's too late now. And the thing is, even like after the fact, it wasn't just the launch of Warhammer 3. <laughs> like, their social media posts, like, they're so tone deaf. Happy birthday, Three Kingdoms! You know. <laughs> God damn it. Game that. The Three Kingdoms community is so bitter towards Creative Assembly for abandoning their game. And that rightfully so, I think. Rightfully so. Like, CA don't have any obligation to any of us to continue developing a game after launch. Right? They should, though. I think that whatever Three Kingdoms 2 comes next is probably going to flop just because of the people that are just angry at Creative Assembly. But I don't know. Unless it's amazing. We'll see. But if it's just like a saga game of Three Kingdoms, then nah, it's going to fail. Well, I played Total War Shogun 2 when I was a teenager. I'm 32 now. Hmm. How do the Lords and Factions of 3 stack up to 2? Average, great, ETC. Yeah, they're on par. They're on par for sure. Except for Castalton, maybe. Yeah, all the Legendary Lords of Warhammer 3 are pretty damn strong. All the factions are fine. They're just, like, missing a lot of their roster, which you expect with a game of launch. Um, I think the problems with Warhammer 3 is that people were expecting a lot from the, um... Uh, Siege rework, and it was... It was... Let's be real. It's It was shit. Um... Absolute shit. Terrible siege rework. And people were expecting Creative Assembly to learn the lessons from Realm of Ca from Vortex campaign, and they didn't. It's really expectations that killed C uh, killed um, Warhammer Three more than anything else. People just expected a lot from it, and I feel like that's fair. People should expect a lot from it. This is a game that you've had to purchase for the third time. You know, Total War Warhammer Project in total is one of the most expensive games in history. It's so like fucking Sims 4 or whatever. It's got like a thousand dollars of DLC. Um, and to get anything less than a stellar production is unacceptable. I know Rem 2 isn't that bad, but I actually really enjoy it. Yeah, look, it's fine if you enjoy Rem 2. It had a very bad launch, but, you know, people still play it to this day. I think it's a bad game, but... Whatever. I'm not going to get upset with people for playing a game I don't like. But how dare you play Rem 2? Don't you know that there's better games? No, I'm just kidding. Paradox games are also so expensive for DLC. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Paradox Games, right? You look at Crusader Kings 3. I think that had a good launch. And I think that's going to be supported for a while. Um, Imperator Rome. Dead game. Bad launch. Dead game. People had high expectations for it. It's not a bad game, but it's, it's dead. Thing is, Im uh, Imperator Rome didn't have an Immortal Empires to lean on. 
Luckily, Creative Assembly have a lifeline. So... Hopefully they use this lifeline well, and... Uh, I don't think they can redeem themselves, but they can... They can step towards it. So I just need to waste the ammo of the... Quarrelers first. I probably should waste the ammo of them. I'll just summon zombies in front of them. So let me through. We'll get there, just for the long run. Hopefully, but here's the problem. You have to look at a company's history to sort of see how they, they behave, right? Creative Assembly will ditch a project if they feel like they can't make any money or if it's feel like it's too far gone, right? You look at Thrones of Britannia, a game that they definitely had DLC planned for, okay? You play Thrones of Britannia, at the very menu, the top menu, there's a big DLC button. There's only one DLC for Thrones of Britannia, that's the Blood Pack. They canned it. Why'd they can it? Because the launch was shit and they couldn't recover quickly. Um... Now, they canned Three Kingdoms, but Three Kingdoms' launch was really good. It just... I, I just don't think it sold DLC well. And also, the DLC for Three Kingdoms sucks. It's kind of their own fault. Um, I feel like people would have bought more Three Kingdoms DLC if they did a better job of it, but whatever. Then there's um, Warhammer 3. Bad launch. Really, really bad launch, right? If Immortal Empires doesn't hit all the notes that it needs to and restores it, the game to, like, maybe twenty to 30,000 concurrence shortly after launch um big troubles they they might abandon it they might very well abandon it if they drop Wormit 3 I'll drop Total War I kind of feel the same way yeah and hopefully they realize that that they can't just drop Warhammer 3 like they did Three Kingdoms, I think the ramifications of it would be far more severe. And it's already going to be severe for, for dropping Three Kingdoms. You know, whatever the Three Kingdoms 2 uh, title is going to be, I I think they're, they're going to have to work hard to gain people's trust on that one, because I'm not going to support it. Unless they, like, absolutely revolutionize it and use entirely new assets and make it, like, the best Three Kingdoms experience. Like, better than, way better than, than current Three Kingdoms. Then, then it'll be like, okay, fair enough. But if it's just, like, Three Kingdoms 2, but it's Three Kingdoms with, with reused assets, then, nah, fuck it. Okay, I know this is a little bit tedious, but it needs to be done here. We're up against a very strong enemy. If we don't do this, we're going to get wrecked. Dropping Wormit 3 means you will have to fire like 200 people. Not necessarily. They already got your money. They sold, what, a million some copies? I'm not sure. So just shuffle the people around to the next project. You know, there's a... Whatever is next on the Total War side of thing has already been in development for a while. You know, it's not like everybody's working on Warhammer... Three. So we'll see. Um, I can't read that. Did a two hundred? Sorry, one ten RON super chat. Uh, why do you think Warhammer Three is bad? Come to the channel. I don't think Warhammer Three is bad. I think Warhammer Three is good. Warhammer Three, however, is not as good as Warhammer Two. That's the problem. It's an inferior product to what's come before. There's nothing in Warhammer 3 that... Well, very little in Warhammer 3 to entice people to play it over Warhammer 2. Which is why Warhammer 2 has more players. Thanks for the chat, though. Appreciate it. Oh, that's right. I said I had to get rid of this one here. Not too concerned about wasting the ammunition of the handgunners or wiping them out, although... Let's see. So what I'm doing here, because that'll do so much damage to my blob, we get them to waste their ammo on a summon.
It might even be better to waste that one's ammo with, um... With summons. Because they don't have that much. They're actually doing quite a lot of damage to their own troops. But I didn't quite use up all their ammo. It's okay, these spells only cost 4 wins of magic, no big deal. Warhammer 3 just needs $300 of DLC to be like Warhammer 2. No, 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 no. It needs the Warhammer 2 DLC to be available in Warhammer 3. That's all. And to not play the Realm of Chaos campaign, which is, in my opinion, too far gone. It's um, Unless they drastically rework how it works, which they yeah, generally don't do that, but we'll see. Uh, Realm of Chaos is um, it's too late for it. It's gone. I don't think people are going to give it a second chance. Alright, the only reason this unit here is dangerous is because of its ammunition, and it's difficult to dodge, so what if we waste it? Rather than using up 21 wins of magic to wins of death them, I'll use up 4 or 8 wins of magic and just waste their ammo. Because if they go into melee with this over here, they'll lose. Your ship dropped fast since yesterday, shame. Uh, yes, but I think it's actually because of the internet disconnection I had at the start of the stream. I'm actually inclined to do another episode on this, because if I have a look at analytics, while yes, the, the viewer concurrent number is lower than yesterday, the average view duration of you guys being here is actually quite high. So it tells me that people who are here do want to watch it, but I think we got fucked over by the disconnection. Which, that happened. It sucked that it happened right at the start of the stream. So, I'm gonna blame that. When is the best time to use Arcane Conduit? As soon as you need it. Uh, when you're at 30 wins of magic, there's no point. It doesn't generate permanent reserves. So doing it right now won't do anything. Alright, so I've used up a total of 16 wins of magic a total of 16 wins of magic and practically depleted that one's ammo how long did the disconnect last for uh, about 15 minutes but anytime we've had a disconnect it's always fucked over the stream so I just, I just gotta write it off They forgot they were supposed to make a Total War game, not a garbage tower defense game. I, I don't think it's a tower defense game, but I can understand why people want to argue that. Alright, all of their ammunition spent now. Alright, the best units to hit now are the long beards, because they'll do the most damage to it, especially the ones with great weapons. And next time we use a Wind of Death will be on the blob. Because we don't have tons of Winds of Magic. We need to make sure we're as efficient as possible with what we've got. See, so yeah, I permanently reduce their player counts with their minor settlement choices. Among other things. I, I think minor settlement stuff's fine. But that's just me. Sorry to bother you. Do you plan to release the next unit tier list in the near future? Yes. Who's your favorite 40k race, and why is it Necron? Uh, I don't know if it's actually Necron. I think I like the Imperium. I don't know, they're interesting. Hans Zell, become a new member. Alright, thanks dude, appreciate the support. Tyranids are pretty interesting, I suppose.
Are you boring? That's a weird question to ask someone. Yes, I'm very boring. I'll just download a mod to remove the minor settlements when they release IE. Yeah, whatever you want. How should the Realm of Chaos look like to be good? Well, I've explained this before. Um, it doesn't matter about what they do. It just comes down to a general philosophy, right? Um, they can either make it less punishing. So basically make it so that the Realms of Chaos is just not that much of a chore to do. Which it currently is a massive chore. Or they can put in big rewards for doing it. Um, they absolutely need to rework the Realm of Cinch. That is non-negotiable. That realm is unacceptable. From a game design perspective, how that ended up in the game is absolutely beyond me. Like, if you were at a... If you were at a game's school, like university, and you designed that as your project, you should fail your project. That's how bad that design is. You know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to overplay it. Like, it's so bad, the Realm of Cinch design. You know, from a d design perspective, that just should never have been allowed to be put into the game, period. Um, absolute failure of game design. But anyway, so yeah, they either make it way less punishing. Like, you go into the realms and you can, like, get a soul in within, like, two turns sort of thing, rather than five to ten turns sort of thing. Um, sort of make each realm like the Realm of Corn, because that's probably the least punishing. You can get the Realm of Corn done very quickly. But the Realm of Slanesh, for example, is like a minimum 8 turns. It's fucking annoying. Um, at least there's some rewards to be have if you choose not to get a soul. Um, or they could just make it so you get a soul and you get like a permanent buff. And that Bellicor is actually interesting at the end of it, which he currently isn't. He's got like the most boring skill tree ever. Yeah, that's, that's how they could fix it. But, you know, I've been telling them that for four or five months now. So, yeah. They're either going to do it or they're not. So the mechanic itself is not that bad? Uh, Some of it. There's bits and pieces of it. So, like, the Realm of Corn is fine. The Realm of Slanesh is, like, okay because there's at least rewards in there. But it takes too long to, to do it. Robs you of your time. The Realm of Nurgle sucks, but it's not that bad. The Realm of Cinch is just unacceptable. Now, one of the biggest problems with the Realm of Chaos is that every faction essentially has the exact same story and the exact same outcome. Um, and it's not interesting. It's just not interesting. Basically, there's so much that they could do with the Realm of Chaos that it's really just anything. They really just went with, like, the worst possible thing that they could possibly think of. It's just... Almost from every level, terrible design. Yeah. I don't know what they were thinking. Oh, you've got glittering scales, don't you? Yeah, there we go. That'll reduce their melee attack, slow them down a bit. Just waiting for more of them to get in here, but maybe I should just take it. We'll, we'll get the Winds of Magic back. Fuck, everything's red. What am I playing? Warhammer 3 here? Gotta love that Dawi soup. And I didn't hit my own units. That's good. Oh, we got this as well. Yeah, that's good. The story is kind of pox. The, the the narrative story, the actual written part of it is fine. The, but the problem is, is that whatever the story is saying is not actually what's going on in the game. Like, you know how... Let's just take Nurgle, for example. 
Nurgle, you're out to get a god pox. What do you get at the end of your campaign after consuming Urson's dick, whatever? You Bellicor. You don't get the god pox. So why why the why the fuck did you put that in as a story? You didn't get it. You know? Scarbrand doesn't get Corn's favor. Oh, but that's law friendly. Yeah, well, then what was the point of doing it? Uh, yeah, Bellacore, that's law friendly. You know, you know how much Scarbrand loves spellcasters. You know, playing as Kislev, we want to restore the 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 summer. What do you get, Bellacore? Okay, I think I nicked myself a little bit there. But I'd be surprised that doesn't actually cause the army losses. Yeah, it did. You know. Playing as Cathay. What do you get? Fucking Bellacore. Cinch. Sight of the present, future, and the past. What do you get? Bellacore. Slanesh. Feast on torment, Bellacore. Ogres. Feast on a, on a uh, beast, Bellacore. You know? Like I said, I got nothing wrong with the player getting Bellicor, but that's not what the story said you were going to get. Alright, right, we got a bit of mid Winds of Magic. We should probably try to... Uh, no, I think we'll be fine. Uh, yeah, it'll be fine. Just leave that there. Like I said, just putting in the time and effort there to make sure that it just took two casts. Because so, too many times in this campaign, we've like stuffed around, cast too many times while they're trying to get in here. I only had a few casts, I had to make use of them. I agree with that. Each faction should have their different reward. Yeah, and it should have been, like, relative to what they were doing. Like, in, think of it this way. Let's just let's just take Cinch. What if, instead of getting Bellacor, the game gave you a different changing of the ways? Right? Something that you can only get in the Realm of Chaos campaign... And only if you win the narrative campaign. A, a different changing of the ways. So you're playing as Nurgle, you win the campaign. What do you get? You get a new option for a pox. The best one, right? You get the god pox. Nope. You're playing as Corn. Okay, you don't get Corn's favor. But instead, fucking 20 melee attack to all forces. You know? Something like that. That's a, a bit boring, but at least it makes all of your forces fucking overpowered. Or like 20% ward save across all forces. Something like that, right? Um, Kislev, you know, economy. What if what if the summer brought a plus hundred percent extra income to all provinces or something like that? I don't know. And you get a greater invocation of Urson. Don't know. There's loads of things that you could do. But yeah, what they currently did was just stupid. That's a good item. Alright, cool. We've still got enough movement to come over here and occupy Montfort. Because I can't sack and raise it. You think evading more is impressive? Why yes. Alright, what do you got? Channeling stuff? I want you to put that on. Cool. That also help with miscasts. Alright, bad idea to order resolve this. Because there'll probably be a counterattack. Wings back to Scarbrand? Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of things you could do. And in fact, a lot of the ideas I've had from the com heard from the community are really interesting. But CA doesn't come up with interesting stuff. Well what if what if they did actually come up with interesting things, but they just ran out of time? Still, I feel like they should have just done something, rather than just Bellicor. What are your thoughts on Crane Gunner's buff? Eh, whatever. Seems fine. Alright, I think I can do this with just Manfred and... Manfred, I'm... Um, Vlad and, um... Oh, they can't hide properly there. Alright, never mind. Yeah, bring him over this way. I think I know what I need to do. Give him 
mal wir. Ah, oh, fuck, I forgot. That's impossible area. I think Vampire Counts might be in trouble in Immortal Empires with the Winds of Magic changes and balancing. Uh, while the unlimited Winds of Magic exploits exist, they'll be fine. But we'll see. Seems likely that they'll put something in there for the Vampire Counts to be able to increase their Winds of Magic reserves. But also don't forget that with the melee cheats being reduced for the AI, um, it's not going to be as punishing to fight for the vampire counts. Let's hope I, I, I will not fail. Yeah, of course, everyone's hoping, well, most people who play Total War Warhammer, at least, are hoping IE won't fail. But, you know, confidence is shot. So we'll have to just wait and see here. Ogres equal infinite meat. Yeah, so maybe. Whatever. I never found meat to be a problem though for ogres, so I probably would have found that to be pretty boring. Because they've like come up with good ideas with um, campaign um, rewards in the past. Like think about Snitch's campaign reward. You get Sarkan. It's not even a big reward, but at least it's interesting. Oh yeah, these guys here, they shouldn't take out the archers. Let's see, Warhammer 3 Cinema Battles are very unappealing for me because I've always liked to take my time with sieges and the supply system forces me to fight like a bull in a china shop. You can still take your time if you bring the right army. With uh, major settlement battles, if you bring artillery and archers, yeah, you just you still take your time because if as long as you stay outside the settlement, they'll keep bringing more units to the walls. Scabrath is not that good. Okay, we're in. Yeah, Grail Knights in there. Alright, with the last of our magic, I think we should just use Melkoth, Mystify, and Miasma because it's cheap on the Grail Knights. That'll probably give us the best value. As soon as we get back up to 30 wins of magic, that is. Alright, I think these guys can take on some foot squares here. 
As long as they cycle charge, should be fine. Good, didn't take any damage, and they took heaps. Okay, Grail Knights are by far the strongest unit in the garrison, so that's the one we got to target. So, doing 900 damage to a tier 4 unit, I think that's pretty good for 5 wins of magic. No economy cheese when? Um, anytime we do any kind of restrictive campaign, people get bored with it really quickly. So... The best ones are when we just go full cheese. If you want to watch someone not cheese, just watch somebody else. And I don't enjoy not cheesing. I like full cheese. There's a few cheeses I don't like using, though. Worst race in Warhammer 2? Um, Norska. If you're playing on very hard campaign, or very hard or legendary campaign difficulty, it'd be Norska. Norska's got some big problems on those difficulties. Well, it's a good thing we got all Spearmen. God damn, they got wrecked. See, this is where all those extra stats are coming in handy. Look at that. 31 melee attack, 49 melee defense for shit skeleton spears. And they can still get a bit stronger. Oh yeah, Thoric Ironbrow. That's a good trade as well for um, them. What are some cheeses you don't like doing? I don't like doing the loyalty cheese. This is where you deliberately cause a lord to defect over and over again on the same turn so that you can power level up your lord. Um, you can do it with Skaven factions and um, Dark Elves. I don't like doing that one. Uh, I don't really enjoy doing the movement bug cheese, but I'll do it if I feel like I can get... I just use it a little bit if I feel like I need to. Um... Those are pretty much the, the two that I don't really like that much. Alright, we have made it into Britannia now. Alright, they have got more than a full stack in the area, so they could attack us with tier 4 units, which wouldn't be good, but we're in good shape. This is where we have to fight the battles manually. Alright, Vlad needs... To get stronger. Don't worry about getting lightning strike. Don't need it. Good, that one's getting better. Alright, let's see. Isabella needs to level up. That'll be useful if we go up against gyrocopters. Never heard of loyalty cheese? Yeah, it's because I never do it. I don't, I don't, I haven't actually ever really tried it, so I, I'm not sure about the nuances, but some people have got it down to a T, where they can get to like level 40 on turn 3 or something, it's ridiculous, but I just, I just don't think it's entertaining to do it, you, and you really don't need to, it's just tedious, alright, what are we doing next, oh yeah, 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 so, this guy can't make it down here, What I could do, though, I will not obey. is set up a trap. If I put this guy in Force March, like here, 
Because he's immortal, he can't be killed. Right. I could go into ambush stance here. This might work. Go into ambush stance here. With both of these lords. Send this guy to force march right there. This should entice hip. Oh, I'll need to make him a bit weaker. This should entice this guy here to attack the um, the Blood Dragon Bloodline Lord instead of attacking Vismund. It's a gamble. It, it, he could he could might he still might do it, but um, uh, we'll see. We will see. Because yeah, if he enters the zone of control here. Hang on, I might need to move a little bit more over, actually. Okay, see if we can ambush him. Alright, then... Okay, good amount of growth coming in here now. That's good. Last person did a 20 SEK super chat. I meant the cheese where you go bankrupt and heal. Oh yeah, that one. Um, that's not so good anymore. It used to be a lot better. Thanks super chat. Yeah. Yeah, they they nerfed that one a lot because you used to go bankrupt and go into raid stance. And uh, you wouldn't take attrition. And then if you're using single entities and healing, you just um, recover. But no, they, they nerfed it. Which is fine. Alright. Oh, we got Temple Hoff at Tier 4. Nice. See, this is what I was talking about before. They managed to get Temple Hoff to Tier 4 before we could get this to Tier 4. So the AI grows so quickly. Good. With this, we can finally... Build... This one here doesn't provide us as much money as this one, but we want Banshees. Let me just have a look here. As for Master Necromancers, what did we get this turn? Nothing. We got a Lore Keeper ready to go. Yep, so this will save us a little bit of money. I can actually get both. Get that one, and let's increase our capacity for Vampires. And that'll be good as well, but I'm just out of money. Okay. Yeah, still need it to grow. Gotta to get to tier 5. Good, good, good. And since this province here makes more money, just put them back over here. Make marginally more. Okay, that's fine. Alright, if we go with Strigoi Forbidden Dark Arts next, which will require 12 bloodlines, we can really reduce the public order penalties from presence or lack of corruption, so that'll be really good. Um, there's a lot of good things still in here, but I think I want to go for that, because that will allow us to expand a lot quicker. Because like, we've still got situations over here where we're going to have revolts. Yeah, it is just not worth going back there to solve that issue. It's just not worth it. That is... I'll just leave it as it is for now, but I'll probably get rid of that eventually. I don't think there's any landmark here, is there? No. But it might be better to build this so that we get the um, extra capacity for necromancers. Just go with extra tax rate there. And let's move on. Should CA increase the attrition that the AI takes in corrupted territory? Yeah. Yeah, the AI barely take any attrition. Have you heard of community revolting against the company because of the TF2 community is doing that? Save TF2? Um, it's not completely unheard of, I suppose. I'm not familiar with the TF2 community. But yeah, CA is... 
See, his fan base is usually pretty damn loyal. They're very fortunate about that. Um, yeah, we'll see. I shall hear thine words, oh. green skin. Oh, he still wants non-aggression pact. Okay, whatever. I don't. I don't want it. Alright, let's see what happens with Nordland. Hopefully they take the bait. Team Fortress 2? Yeah, TF2 is Team Fortress 2. Ah, oh, You gotta love the master bait! <laughs> you got fucked, boy! Oh, shit. It's a lot more damage than I thought. Doesn't matter, we got him. You got fucked, boy. We saved the city. Mm, there's more shit on the way. Yeah, there's a lot of shit on the way. With basic armies, it'll be a bit of a challenge, but uh, we'll see how we go. Gotrick. Gotrick's a good trait for vampires. <gasps> Dimitri Tsaryov. Uh, point is, community revolts so big that the company is forced to do what the community wants. Hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think that can happen within Total War. Yeah, yeah. Community is so divided all the time. I just don't think that would happen. Oh, they're recruiting quick. Uh, okay. So Averland is going to have a revolt, but if I exempt it... Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Crap. Because we got... I should have changed that last turn. Oh, Kevin von Lloydstein. Oh, I forgot about you. Alright, if you make it to Averland, you'll actually keep it under control. Uh, let's have a look at how he was leveled up. Uh, it's fine, whatever. <coughs> cool, that stopped the revolt. Yeah, we're gonna swing around over here, take on Karak Kedrin. No, 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 just recruit them naturally. You can do that at Drakenhof. Now, the only problem here is that there might be a dwarf army on the way down here, because they did have some military prints, but I suspect they were actually at Mount Gunbad, but I don't know for certain. So we'll just have to wait and see that. Cool, let's have a look at what heroes we got this turn. Come on, something. No. Ready. Nothing there. And what were the vampires? Nope, and nope, and nope. Okay, that's fine. Why does the AI always not give Gotrick an army most of the time? Uh, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um. Okay, it's Volkmar. Cool. My puppet's done. All right. Seems like seems like he's okay for now. What we're gonna do here, I think, is blow up Karak Ziflin. That'll allow the Barrow Legion to go and occupy it. I'm not gonna give him a non-aggression pact. 
Because we want him to have more than one settlement. We should just be able to auto this. Yeah, it's fine. And then just blow it up. Later, bitch. Unfortunately, after you blow up a settlement, you lose all of your movement. So, if they come over here and attack Montfort, I can't stop them. So, I should, probably should have sacked them. Oh, I wouldn't have had enough movement. Anyway, that's free for him to take now. And if they do go and occupy or sack it, well then, I will get them next turn. Cool, so this will give Helmand Gorse the defeat trait. Because Manfred's already got it. Will you stack Necromancers at Drakenhof to boost income? Maybe, if I get knowledgeable ones. Only if they're knowledgeable. Thing is, I need Necromancers in my other armies first. Probably. Just not getting the right traits. Death is only the beginning. Master of the dead. I'll take Sigmar's throne. Okay, come and stand over Himyar oh. because there's units to raise the dead here. Where there isn't in Altdorf. Okay. We have to just be careful that they don't cause a revolt there. Uh, and my dude over here wants you to wound this. Good. And that gives us another blood kiss. Ah, I may not be able to save mid and land. No. Ah, shit. I refuse. Ready. Possible. Yeah, oh shit. There's a lot of uh, Nordland forces coming down here. If we have a look at their strength ranking, they're really quite strong. And my forces here are kind of dog shit. So yeah, this guy here can force march into Middenheim. That might be able to just prevent them from... You're at war with them, right? Yeah. Or we could set up another trap for this dude. Yeah, maybe we can just set up another trap for him. Try to get into Light Forest. Yeah, we'll just set up another trap. Obviously. My will alone. Yeah, make sure we're in light for us. 90% success oh. chance, but don't get too close to him. Or else he'll pull us out. And then make sure this dude here is on force march. But also make sure that Gotrick can't reach him, because otherwise they'll just send like a small force at him. Okay, cool. We'll see if he takes the bait. This guy over here, he could force march over this way, but yeah, even if we just ambush one of them, that's still pretty good. It's going to be a bit of a fighting ground there for a while. Don't forget tier 4 vampire building at Templehof. I think you mean this one here, the uh, Lodestone of Darkness. Who shall we destroy? I smell death. All right, what are we doing next? This one here, yeah, you just keep doing what you're doing over here. You got to level up. You're of no use to us until you get some good spells. I think it'll be Carl Franz that comes back there next turn. Alright, I think that's all of my military movements made. We currently have active nine armies. Oh, God. 
<laughs> no wonder I'm broke. Hang on. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Seven, yeah, nine armies. Bloody hell. Looking at the worst defenders of public order. Avalon's the worst. Middenland is actually okay. Don't worry about building anything right now. Um, Altdorf. Uh, I may have to turn off taxes, but not yet. This one here is definitely going to revolt. Yeah, I just can't justify building any more forces there. Okay, that one we might be able to get through. Alright, and... I don't have any more money for construction, so let's just move on to the next turn. We already checked heroes and stuff, didn't we? Looking at Master Necromancers. Mwah. Found you. Oh, we inherited a Master Necromancer from Manfred. Nice, because I didn't recruit that dude. Nicely done, and we get another one. Cool. Knowledgeable. Good, give me those winds of magic. That'll make all of our armies stronger. Alright, so it's definitely going to be a revolt here. Um, if they besiege this settlement, well then maybe the revolt will attack them, but I don't think it could beat them. But we'll just have to see how we go. Here we go. You can tax mid and lend. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, I should have done that. I wish I had read that a few seconds earlier. I kind of want them to attach all those heroes into their army so I can kill them. What is Wolfric doing? Nah. Does knowledgeable stick around after you disband the Lord? For the Lord, yes. For the hero, no. The character just has to be alive. Global bonuses apply even when not active. The character has to be alive. Oh. Alright. I didn't successfully do the ambush, but at least, at least we got him. An auto resolve is probably not going to work there. Yeah, we'll just no, no, that's not acceptable, not at all. That army just gets totally fucked up, and I don't want to lose my siege attacker. So we have flock of doom. Uh, this really shouldn't be a problem. Couldn't you bring your white boy down to kill them for blood kisses? Well, he, he only wounds them. You're going to load up Altdorf or Drakenhof with Necromancers? Probably Drakenhof. Alright. They didn't have any cavalry, so this guy should be faster than them, even if he has on Force March. We want to start wasting some of their ammo. Get over there, everyone. Alright, let's get the Strigoi to try to target the uh, thing. What we want to do is have that Lord use up his Arrows of Akshi three times first. We've also got Fireball.
Alright, so in terms of damage dealing spells, we have to rely heavily on Flock of Doom. And we have 95... That's actually a good amount of wins. Yeah, let the Strigoi get shot, because he's got... He's faster, and he's um, got regen. Get the Blood Dragon over there. Alright, with these fireballs, I think we should be aiming for the free company militia, but we need to make sure we get a good shot at them. Where they're not firing back at us as well. Yeah, you don't need to be here, you go back. Get ready to kill my CPU. Whoops. Great, now I've lost track of what I was doing. Does the Red Duke have any unique perks? Uh, yeah, he's got like a, a trait or a skill called El Sif. Um, it's just a, a, like a hero or lord debuff. It's it's okay. Apart, oh yeah, another thing is that he can get all of the... Um, you know how with regular Blood Dragon Lords, they have mutually exclusive lines? You can get all of that with the, with the Red Duke. So yeah, he is significantly better than regular Blood Dragon Lord. Well, seems like the zombies can't keep up. So I'd use the fireball, but they shoot back at us. We'll end up doing more damage to ourselves than to them. Because fireball's not necessarily a quick spell to cast. Especially if you're just going to walk around in circles like a moron. Alright, look. I'd much rather they shoot at zombies than skeletons. Oh no, they, they can't beat that. Yeah, just try to get them to, uh, to to get shot by them, if possible. Yeah, I was gonna just ban the zombies anyway, so it's fine. Let them get wiped out. So yeah, what we need to do here is. Try to get them into as big of a blob as possible. Uh, might be a good idea to actually start casting some of it over here. Could overcast it. Yeah, it should be fine. Double the cost, but also doubles the damage. Oh no, my zombies. We got this dude hanging out over here, but if I go charging in, then they'll constantly try to chase after him. We have to wait for them to commit first. Why don't you use zombies as meat shields? Luca Wa did a $5 super chat, new CPU funds. Alright, thanks dude. Thanks for super chat. Appreciate it. Alright, so that first 
Flock of Doom for 10 wins of magic did 5,600 damage. El Sith? No, it's called El Sith. SIF. Yeah, what we need is for them to shoot at our lords, because they're going to be a lot less accurate. Oh, I see what's happening here. Reinforcements are coming in, because we had more than two full stacks. Oh, at least they're shooting into shields. Oh, that was stupid of him. What a waste. Alright, one of these guys has got a glittering scale, so I just can't remember which one. Is it you? No, it's you. Alright, you stay here. And this one can run around. Are they going to improve that poor performance with skeletons and massive summons? Probably not. Only affects cheeses. Really. Well, they've still got some great swords just sitting in here, so we're getting some good damage in with the Flock of Doom. Would be good if they were all together in one shot, but you know, it's not going to happen right now. Good, 18,000 damage. That's really good. Let's keep these guys out of it. I'll bring the cavalry in as soon as these great swords have commit to the fight here. Because if I bring them in now, then they'll start chasing us, and it'll just be really difficult to cha charge at them. So, expect them to come in. Alright, now that they've commit, now we bring him in. This one here hasn't commit yet. Is the painting continues tomorrow? Yes. Alright, he's getting a bit too damaged. Let's pull him back a bit. Kidding me? I think that fireball just blew up in his face. There you go.
Yeah, that's kind of sucked. And look how stuck they got. Cavalry 101 against archers. <laughs> Fucking... Major one she used cavalry. Oh my god, they got so stuck on that charge. Holy crap. Great, they're gonna need a whole bunch of Nehex in order to get useful again, but it might as well just not even use them. Just forget it, stupid cavalry unit. Don't even need it. At least it's got them distracted for a little bit. And now we break out. These three go beeline straight for him and kill him. Yeah, they're still chasing after my cavalry there. Blood Knights suck. Those are Black Knights. Uh, Black Knights suck. Blood Knights are... They're good units with... They're just overpriced. These ones out of the way because he's actually making it more difficult for them to fight. I think we just inflicted the army losses. Yep, we did. Okay, it's probably in our best interest not to wipe out this dude here because otherwise, we'll just get another one. And now, this is where the cavalry will start to deliver some value running down other units. I laughed at how bad Black Knights were first time I saw their stats. Barely good enough to beat missiles, infantry, and melee. Yeah, especially considering um, the melee cheats as well. Oftentimes that they'll charge into a missile unit, and the missile unit will have better stats on it if you also consider experience. It's like, they get tons of free experience, and they'll have 20% stats on top of it. Which may not seem like that much, right? But if think about what 20% is. Look, if you look at this, it says melee attack 18. That really means that their melee attack is 21. Melee defense 21, probably closer to 25. Right, so their melee defense is one lower than the Black Knight's melee attack. Yeah, that's, that's not very good. Do you think Vampire and Tomb King units will synergize well if you recruit one of all one of the allies as others? Uh, I guess. I guess it... No, I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. They're essentially the same unit, but... Hmm, I don't know. Uh, Corentin Abgral did a five-year subject. When confederating Bretonians, do you know if the chivalry loss is applied before or after the actual confederation? It's for the double vouchers. I have no idea, dude. Sorry. Thanks for Super Chat. Have you seen Martin Lawrence in The Black Knight? I have. I have actually seen that movie. It was alright. Are Black Knights any better if you have the whole Blood Dragon line unlocked? 
Yeah, they'll have a little bit of extra melee attack, I suppose. Um, weapon strength. Yeah, but a lot of the cavalry in this game have fairly low stats. Their attack value and defense value is very low. Um, I think the reason for that is because their charge bonus is supposed to compensate for it. But the problem is when you charge into a unit that's like in loose formation like we did, um, they get stuck. Alright, cool. We didn't lose anything apart from zombies there, and I will take the money. Thing is, even though we beat them, Gotrick and Felix can probably... Oh! Okay. If I send an army over there, we can probably finish them off. Vampire counts plus TK Archer's Artillery. Yeah, maybe. Goofy ass movie. It is goofy, yeah. No, 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 no! Don't attack that! Oh shit, I have full strength. Okay, okay, okay. Um, There's a good chance I'll lose, but I'll give this a shot. While well, you know have balls, attack man, uh, Vlad. I can give this a shot. Alright, um, well there's no point in staring at it, let's just get into it. Do you have an opinion on what to expect on Nagash if he is someday in the game? Nah, just make him OP. Don't make him, don't make him boring. Don't give him like, just basic, yeah, just make him super overpowered. Like he should make Kairos Fate Weaver look like a blue chicken. But Kairos Fate Weaver is a blue chicken. All right, so, 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 a lot of their units are cavalry, but they have artillery and a flying lord. Hmm. Okay, so, this is one of those very rare occasions where fighting on the walls might actually be beneficial. Okay, by spreading them out, it's going to be harder for the archers to hit us. Now, here's another thing. I really wish we had, like, a hero here. Um, because it's possible for us to do the gate bug. Because they're going to want to try to get through here. And in order to... Oh, oh, it's going to be tough, but I think we can do it with that. We need to do the gate bug. It's actually easier to do it with melee infantry because they're going to a thinner formation. Problem here, though, is the field trebuchet. We have to get rid of that. Just have to. Um, so that's where the Vargulfs... Oh, wait, what about them? Actually, no, they can do it. They can do that. So the Vargeists, their job is entirely to take out the field trebuchet, but this guy here might be a problem. Because we have no missile units, there's no value falling back here. We need to make use of the towers. Okay. Gate bug. Activate! Gate bug, good. We did it. Okay, now we have to make sure that they don't destroy a section of walls. Okay, they're not aiming for a section of wall at the moment, I think. Let me just check this. Yeah, they're just aiming for units. That's okay, that's okay. They cannot be allowed to come in through the gate. You just stay right there, boy. Don't you dare close that gate. Oh no! They have the gate open. We can't attack them. That's it. whatever. Right. I just got. I got to get over there. Even if we end up losing all of the var guys, we have to get rid of the field trebuchets.
Fly, you fools. Fly! Good, we broke it. But fly, 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 fly. It'll still possibly rally. So we're not done yet. Okay, stay close to them so that they don't rally. <laughs> yeah, they just stare at you. Okay, escort that one off the battlefield. Need to fly. Good boys. Okay, need some reinforcements over here. Okay, seems like the battle cr bill crumbs are giving us a bit of a problem, but the peasant bowmen are doing just fine. I mean, we're killing the peasant bowmen just fine. Making sure they don't have anyone behind us. Okay, yeah, these it would be good to wipe out the field trebuchet, but as long as they leave the battlefield, that's all that really matters. Uh, where's their lord? Because he'll be wanting to fight as well. Oh, there he is. Um, where are you? This guy ain't he large? No, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Like, cavalry is shit against it, but if this is the only thing that they need to do, just do it. Have any other oh shit, 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 get up. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have landed that time. Alright, we just once again had a little bit of a stream fight. You didn't miss anything. No, 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 no. If he attacks them, like they put them on guard mode, don't get them to move out of the way. So I put them on guard mode so I don't reform. Yeah, boy, you are not leaving this area. You made the mistake of landing, you have to suffer the consequences. Because, yeah, he's their faction leader. If we wound him, we get a blood kiss. Well, he puts up a good fight, but we are getting him. He's trying to escape still. Not allowed.
Which faction do you think has the best monsters? Uh, Lizardmen, yeah, probably. Lizardmen or Norska? Mammoths are amazing. Then again, so are Dragon Ogre Shaggers. Alright, cool. That's the hard part done. Now, how do I lure these guys here into bad positions? I can't land them down here. But I guess what I could do is... Attack this and try to move away. They'll probably get wiped out, but I can lure them over here to get shot. This might not work, though. <laughs> it worked! <laughs> it cost me one VAR, guys, but at least I'm shooting that one. <laughs> All right. All right, it actually works. All right, we've now wrecked them so hard that I will allow them to uh, open the gate. I'll allow them to come through. So, gate's closed. Now they can come through. Because we've taken out everything else. They're all anti-large. They're not going to do well against Graveguard. So they're doomed. <coughs> they're just going to have to funnel through and just get slaughtered. Plus with the support of the, these guys here. Yeah, they're, they're doomed. We've definitely won. Yeah, activate this tower as well, because these guys here eventually have to come back. Uh, won't you come up here as well? There's only one way in, so... Good luck to them. You literally blocked the AI here? Uh, that's usually what I do. Here we go. Army losses should be any moment now. There it is. Well, we absolutely whooped their ass. Good. Never. Good, and we'll get a blood kiss for that as well. But that was a pretty damn strong army that Vlad would have had a little bit of trouble with, because I can't Wind of Death that very well. How you discover these cheats, it's amazing. But they're not cheats, they're exploits. Um, just over time, you just discover the stuff. Yeah, you're not going to survive. Vlad's going to sort you out. They should have gone for an easy target and gone for Montfort. They could have actually beaten me there. But they pissed it away. And Nordlin didn't make any attacks there, so that's good as well. Critical failure. Okay, good. Alright, that's actually good, because I'll probably need to get over here just wipe that out. 
Good, we survived the turn without any defeats. I'm pretty sure we didn't take a defeat, did we? If we did, it wasn't important. Good, extra vampire corruption. Zafbar is about to revolt. But that's okay, this guy's going to come in here. No sign of military presence. Oh, damn, I was hoping Isabella might make it, but no. Okay, I'm going to put her here. In the hope that maybe... Oh, okay, that doesn't seem too difficult. So this guy needs to defend this province. Because there could be um, dwarves coming through here. You still need to keep training. Hey, Legend, thank you for all the entertainment. No worries, my pleasure. Where's my membership? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay, and over here, we... Oh, I don't want to raise another army. He'll be at 99. I'm just going to let this this whole area fall. It doesn't matter. Somebody will come and occupy and take it back. It's a tier 1 settlement. I'm not even taxing it anyway. Dark magic is mine to oh, Volkmar the Grim again. I thought it would be Carl Franz. Oh, well, I'm fine with this. But these oh, two here, they have already... Um, they've got the trait. Who can we tag in then? Let me just see who's available. I don't have any bloodline lords available. Knowledgeable legend, look knowledgeable. Why don't you recruit knowledgeable? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna give it to the bloodline lords. Um. I guess I could just get a new bloodline lawn, although I was trying to get to here, but I only spent three if I go with... Could go with this one for research rate, or weapon strength... Oh yeah, definitely research rate. Yuck. Okay, who should I tag out? Who should I tag out? Manfred. Very disappointing. Yeah, I think I'd rather level up Gorst, have him stay here. Alright, Manfred, you're out. You're in. What the fuck, Volkmar? <laughs> I didn't technically lose any units. And now this guy has the trait. Now, I still think that uh, Karl Franz will come in next turn. So in case you're wondering what I'm doing there, every legendary lord has an initial that I put in to let me know basically who's got what trait. I, I usually do this with my vampire campaigns. Now, he's only going to go and occupy this when the area is cleared. So we have to go over there and sort that out at some point. But we also don't want to leave uh, Paravon um, free to attack us. So that'll just be done whenever. Maybe Bastone will come and take it. Whatever, I'll just blow it up again. This should be an easy order resolve, because what's left is rubbish. Yep. Yep, it's fine. I shall go. I must keep my holy vow. No. What? Shut the <sighs> Alright, look, we're at 7 hours and 20 minutes into the stream. I think it's time for a break. Okay. Really appreciate the support today, guys. Obviously a lower, t much lower turnout than yesterday, but I think it was more to do with the um, uh, disconnection at the start of the stream. That stuff really fucks us over. Shouldn't happen tomorrow, because the maintenance happened today. I actually forgot about it. Anyway, let's go chuck a host over to somebody. I need to go get some rest. And uh, we'll continue this tomorrow because I'm really enjoying this campaign and I don't like starting new campaigns on Thursdays because it's the end of the week. All right, let's chuck a host over to... There's nobody streaming Warhammer 2 at the moment. Let's have a look at Warhammer 3. Uh, it doesn't look like anybody is live streaming Warhammer 3 either. God damn, fucking... There used to be so many people that would live stream constantly. It's just nobody now. Um... 
try Medieval 2, see if anyone's streaming that. Uh, yep. Okay, we got somebody streaming Medieval 2. That's all I got, that's all I can find. People streaming on, um... On... Total War. So, we've got FS Noyan streaming Third Age Total War Divide and Conquer. Oh, hang on, it's not in English. Yeah, sorry, I only host people if they're if they're doing English. Otherwise, people just leave anyway. Uh, sorry, dude. Okay, uh, I'll have a look for someone else. I'll look to see if there's anyone streaming Rome too. I doubt it. But maybe Three Kingdoms. Three Kingdoms have a bit of a resurgence. Let me just check. Uh, nope, nobody's streaming it. Oh, God. Um. Oh, hang on. Srini is live streaming Warhammer 3. I don't know why it didn't pop up in under Warhammer 3. Maybe he didn't mark it correctly. No, he did. Why didn't he show up? That's weird. All right, we'll chuck the host over to Srini. Ready and actually streaming Warhammer 2. All right, well, we stream... We host... That's weird. She didn't show up on my list. Well... Well, anyway, here's a host to Srini. We, we host uh, Radiant Ash, like, loads of times. Um, give it one next time. Anyway, there's a link to Srini. He only just started 26 minutes ago. Uh, so he's playing a Snow Leopard Dooms 